On a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel that does to stupidity what Nathan Thompson did to Kent Hovind's SpongeBob bit. So tonight we have returning to the channel for the third debate between me and him, Brian's Logic. Uh, before we get going, I just want to say thank you everyone for joining. It means the world. Thank you to members and patrons that were in me for the stream just before. Um, it's going to be an epic show tonight, I'm sure. Um, there is possibly another debate after this with a, um, a COVID denier on the plot hole, but um, they're still trying to find a replacement for the guy that ran away from the original debate. <clears throat> so tonight... Me and Brian are going to talk about um, perspective, Coriolis, and uh, any other evidence there is or isn't for the Flat Earth. So why don't we just get on to it. Brian, how are you doing? Hey, Greg. Hey, everybody. How are things? Right. Doing okay? No, Seth? Right. Lovely, lovely. So um, you still hold fast on your claim about perspective that it just drops down, right? Yeah, well, look, I'm going to let a find about my uh, about the whole center frame thing. The center frame thing came from me terming that because of Jesse Kozłowski, the uh, three or four day to and fro I had with Jesse Kozłowski, because he was talking about how in his center frame, his uh, his crosshairs, the post across the lake, I think it was a lake he was across from about seven miles away, seemed mm -hmm. to be below his crosshairs, and I t told him it was angular size change. Um, and he, I, I, told, I, like, I had to tell and throw with him about whether he took angular size change into account and this, that, and everything. And in the end, he told me he didn't take it into account. So the way I called it center frame was because of that. Now, the truth be told, if I, 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 I'll have to show you what I mean. I'm going to show you a video in a while, uh, uh, some stills that's going to appear to debunk me. But then I'm going to show you something else that will go against that again. Because like, no matter what I do, if I show... Uh, video like I or uh, stills like I did the last night, they're not going to be accepted because this wasn't accepted the last night. As far now, as far like angular size change is a real thing. Yeah, uh, of it really it does happen. There, there's um, no. a, a, a really good formula to figure out exactly how big something should look based on how far away it is. Do you know what that formula is? Uh, it's I, I only know it that it's uh, twice the, the distance, half the size. That's kind of the uh, the benchmark, or whatever. Well, isn't the, it? the actual calculation you would use is um, alpha, which is the angular size or the apparent angular size of the object, equals two times mm -hmm. the arc tan of g over two r, where g is the distance to the object and r is the actual distance, of, um, the actual size of the object. And using that formula, you can accurately calculate exactly how big something should be based on how far away it is. And nothing in that says that it would make it fall below um, what, what would be an eye level or below a center frame if the center frame is also eye level. I mean, there's just no reason that that would happen. I understand your, uh, I understand your argument with that. Why the center frame thing, why that is such an argument? Um, I can understand why in a photograph, the center frame of, of a photograph, why you, it would be hard to see how something could drop below that at a distance that would be actually higher than it. Um, but yeah, in, in like with, with angular size change, things continually get smaller as they move away from you. This is, this is true. Yeah, absolutely. Is it not? Uh, yeah. yeah, but th that doesn't mean that it would f then move down in, in the frame. It would, angular size would affect the top and the bottom the same. So the, the bottom would appear to rise up and then the bottom, then the top would appear to go down. That, doesn't say anywhere that the entire thing would move downwards. No, I understand what you mean. That look, angular size basically is like an horizon. Everything meets in the middle. 
Yeah. So your argument is that things can't drop below centre frame. Yeah, not not if they yeah. not if centre frame is the eye level. You know, if that is the tangent or of the eye level that you're looking at, that it's a straight plane looking out from your eye level, nothing would fall below that and nothing would rise above that as it went off into the distance. It would shrink in totality towards that centre point. Yeah, see, the thing about it is, is that I understand your argument and why you see that is so ridiculous. And in a way, you have a point. For something to disappear below centre frame, uh, it does seem kind of ridiculous, but it's not really disappearing below centre frame. It's it's only appears to well, it's only it's only appearing to get smaller. It's not actually getting smaller. No, no, of, of course it's not actually getting smaller. That that's what an, an angular size is. It's, it's the apparent size of something. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, again, that doesn't mean smaller. It doesn't mean downwards. I mean, what what makes something go below centre frame? be as it goes further away what's the actual cause of that happening i mean well, could, could you it, invert that by say if i stood on my head would then things raise above center frame what causes it to uh, go down well all i can say is angular size change so that's the only answer i have that that would happen but, but you, you understand when, when you say angular size change there's nothing in the known laws of angular size that would make it move downwards it would all just shrink in totality. I, that, that's why I'm saying what makes it move down. Yeah, we can both agree that as something gets further away, it appears to reduce in size. That is what the angular yeah. size is. But what, um, in what you say to be true, what makes it then drop downwards in the distance rather than just becoming smaller in totality? Well, the point I made with those stills la there last week was that it appears to do that as opposed to it really is because in my last deal I showed where the center frame really was on the block or whatever as yeah. opposed to where it appears to be now I understand the table was not 100% level uh, and stuff like that I get all that and yeah those things are important uh, but in the end of the day it, I, I understand angular size change things change from the top and bottom and they yeah. meet at a point in the middle that's the general for angular size change yes? yeah um, uh, I have, uh, what I have is uh, something that will appear to debunk me, then I have something else that's actually a photograph from someone else that will show something that went below their center frame or would appear to be below their center frame even though it's at the exact same height above sea level. Right, okay. But, um, and it, their, it, their center frame is high. Okay, so before we look at the pictures uh, and stuff, that, that you're going to show as evidence. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get to the, the crux of the question, which is why it would appear to, to go down. What, what is making it appear to drop below center frame? Because it can't just be the angular size. There has to be something else That's the only answer well. I have. Well, that's the only answer I have. That it's then you understand that it's, it's, kind of an, it's an incomplete answer, right? Because angular size doesn't yeah. change, doesn't an, you know, explain why down. You know, is, is it just something that's happening in our eyes? Uh, and like I said, in that case, could I reverse it by standing on my head? That, that I don't know. Uh, I can't say whether I would reverse it if you stood on your head and everything will go up. Or, um, uh, look, I understand that angular size is everything meeting in the middle. It's like an horizon. Things disappear into an horizon. They get smaller at the bottom and the top. Well, they appear to get smaller at the bottom and the top yes, at the same absolutely. time. And meeting, yeah, yeah. So, uh, look, the, when I termed this uh, centre frame, I was going off of what the, the crosshair is on. That came into my head as a term. It was maybe a bad terminology because of my thing with uh, Jesse Kozwalski talking about his crosshairs. Yeah. Um, and what I was saying about with him made sense. But with the things I showed, they may not be 100% correct. I admit that now. They may not be 100% correct uh, that you won't always get something to go below centre frame. Um, but... The other, but what I'm going to show in a while will show how if you're trying to uh, level everything up, that goes against it too, because that brings the center frame. It, the point I'm making with this, or I'll show with this, is that my center frame, when I level up my camera, my center frame uh, is too low than it should be. Right. As well. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'd have to show you. I'd have to show you the thing. Do you have something you want to show first? I don't um, want me to show that yeah, first. Yeah, well. 
I, I struggled to kind of, um, one of your criticisms of my video was that the, the blocks were too big and I literally didn't have anything smaller. Um, but one of my uh, subs has sent me a, um, uh, after he hearing your criticisms, he redid the, one of the videos that he did. So if I could just play that for you now, that's all right. To, to, uh, yeah, work away. Yeah. Do you want me to go on mute or you? Uh, oh, you can comment if you like. Just uh, you know, try not to in interrupt too much. But we'll see how it goes. No, I just go on mute when it's on. Yeah, sorry. Right. Here we go. <clears throat> so, demonstrate demonstration of perspective, debunking Brian's logic. Setup, leveling, and height adjustment. Setup one: I level on top of wooden blocks. So, uh, so he's got different examples that he's going to show. shows that uh, the sides of each side of the phone is parallel to itself to show that it will be level on a level table and it uses the artificial horizon to center the frame should have put some music over this uh, I think they're uh, wafer biscuits I believe Yeah, I've seen this one. Uh, he 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 actually shared this with me. Yeah, there. If it's the same one, I think it's a, an excellent example of angular size change, showing that from you know it appears to be rising up from the bottom there. Um, obviously, if it was flipped and you know they was he was able to do this on on you know the ceiling, it would appear to go down towards the line from the top instead. Uh, right, so that, that's what, what do you think about that? We, uh, we'll go back to the other ones afterwards because he, he goes on to show that if the camera isn't level, that it can appear to rise or, or lower. But what's your thoughts on that so far? Uh, on that one, the only the, the criticism I only I had with him on that was that he wasn't doing the same as what I did, as he didn't start with something that was bigger than his camera uh, lens, higher than his camera lens, sorry, and move it away. Um, um, for it to show it getting smaller. That was the original thing I was showing with the, when I had the blocks on the table, I was moving them away to get smaller. I wasn't even thinking about them going below the center frame area. I was just showing that I actually was doing what he was doing, just a bit, a bit more of a rough version of just showing angular size change, just a demonstration of angular size change. It wasn't until I, till I, till I annotated this, got some stills and annotated it because uh, of, of something else that popped in, because of something else I saw, um, or I spotted in someone else's video uh, that I annotated the center and found the center frames. Then I realized that it, they seem to be going below my center frame. Uh, that's that's why I that's when like then I remember the term center frame from using it with yeah. with Jesse Kozłowski. Okay, well, and that's why. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that if your camera and table were both level to each other, it would have still dropped below center frame? Uh, I, I'm starting to think that, that, no, if everything was absolutely level, it would be more difficult for that to happen. Right. And, that, and that's, I think that, uh, that's the entire this, point. And, yeah. and when, when yeah. we look at Jesse's observations, that, that's what he's showing, is that even though both of the theodolites are, are leveled with each other, you know, looking out straight, there you can't get one of the, the, the sites in the crosshairs because um, it's... Go on, sorry. Drop, drop down. You know, it's dropped down. So, um, yeah, that, but that's not the same thing as what. Uh, that's not the same thing as what I was showing. I have something that I've. I have other photographs here to show why that would happen with his camera. Why that would happen with his uh, with his uh, the other light. The other light. Right. Do you want to? Um, do you want to if you had a long enough table, it would only. Yeah, I'll show it there. One second. Now, I'm just going to go and get it. I'll uh, just bring up the screen share. See where it is. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna share it on Hangouts. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, should be seeing my screen now. Yeah. 
Okay. This do wanna, is... Uh, do you want to yeah. mute your mic on Hangouts? Oh, sorry, I had a mute. What, what, sorry, I had, I had to restart Google. That's what it was. I had not muted earlier. I had to restart Google. There we go. Sorry about that. That's right. <clears throat> so, I'm sorry to make this a bit bigger. So, this is some photographs I took. Uh, the leveling of it from left to right is not 100% uh, on these, but it's uh, what I just what I'm going to show. It's right forward and back. Um, so, I'm just going to show this is a pitted olive, a jar of olives. There's about seven or eight inches high. And there's another one, the same exact one down below from it, down the hole from it. And there's a, another salt, think of salt, that's higher again than both of those. It's like a sea salt or whatever. And I'm just going to show, <clears throat> from here, I have the crosshairs just underneath the, the black cap, just underneath the cap. And it appears to, from there, it appears that the one at the other end uh, is smaller or down below that height. Because the crosshairs, the center of the crosshairs is above the one down below, but it's it's not actually above it. It just appears that way. And I moved it just a top over the top of it, and I can't even see uh, the red of the uh, salt, uh, the sea salt shaker, which is higher than these. The sea salt, so sorry, the sea salt sea salt shaker is about an inch higher. Um, and then I did it here in midway of the cap. You show it again, and I moved it. The other olives closer, right? Um, and I did it again and, with and that closer. Yeah, in in what in those photos, yeah. it does appear to do that. But um, I mean, we can see even there the the few uh, the few degrees off that the camera is, and we don't really know the leveling situation of the floor as as it goes along. Uh, and yeah, and well, if, the, if, the, if you don't well, have things that are perfectly level, then you are going to get observations that you know aren't what you would expect. But I, I would put money on that if both the camera and the floor were level and everything was lined up with center frame then you would get what you normally see of things just you know decreasing in, in size in totality rather than dropping down I just I, it, it just it just comes back to the question of why that would happen what visual phenomenon is, is causing that well with this here, with this here, with the let's just say just the photograph I have up there, uh, I brought this the the jar, uh, the jar, the other jar of olives closer. I just go back to uh, the first one where it was further away. Now it was a lot further away there, and it was down lower. So when I bring it closer, it's up higher, closer to center frame here. Because uh, no matter what I did with the, I, what I basically did is I. I, I knew I couldn't level the floor because I knew the floor was like the two two point nine there in this one is down to it's always two point nine two point seven to two point nine that's down to the floor uh, and the jar that's on the floor so I have the, the phone up next to the jar uh, I have the the center uh, sorry center frame about halfway up the cap here if I the floor the closer I bring this uh, backward uh, sorry back jar to this one then the more it will align with it. So my point would, was to Jesse Kozłowski that that's what it will that the actual alignment of this is actually halfway up that black or the cap on the the black cap on the other jar, but it appears it appears that it's over when it's not just down to angular size change. Yeah, but the thing is with Jesse's observations is that both the theodolites that you have set up, you know, they're they're a known height above sea level at each point, and when we're talking about the globe, whether you guys accept it or not level is the curve of the earth uh, so we if we say that at two points on the globe something is three meters above the surface of that globe they are both level with each other even though they wouldn't be on a flat plane and that's that and that's the point of what he had both his theodolites were a set you know that he knew exactly how high they were above sea level and he knew exactly what the angles between the you know the 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 bit looking out and the floor were and even though both the angles were exactly 90 degrees and both of them were exactly level based on known distances above sea level one of them still appeared to drop below which wouldn't happen if everything was perfectly level and the surface was flat well th this floor like uh, my mm -hmm. argument there would be this floor is far more level than the curve of the globe earth would be Ah, you see, no, yes, that's, that, that, that's a, um, 
a misunderstanding of, of of the word level because for for when we to when we talk about level we literally mean the curve of the earth that you know, yeah that, i know that, that i know yeah so um Go on, if, if you're I, th I think when when you reference level we need to use the word flat because you're talking about a tangential plane right yeah i'm talking about a horizontal plane yeah yeah, yeah which isn't yeah. necessarily level um and, and, well, and if, if we can just agree on some basic terminology yeah i mean yeah and it can be one of the meanings of level but when we're talking about you know surfaces and and earth level the the, the reference needs to mean the the curve of the earth and flat means needs to mean a tangential plane so that we can even have a basic conversation we need to agree on those basic terms yeah, but I can't agree, uh, Craig. Uh, I don't share my screen there for a moment, uh, in case you want to screen. Uh, I can't. Uh, I will never agree that level is the curve of, curve of the globe, Earth. Uh, I mean, you, I you don't. You don't, you don't have to, to agree that. that it is, but you have to agree that the definition in common usage is that. Well, right? we it's... can put in definitions now. Uh, I just put a definition on screen here. Uh, level definition. Um, now we'll go down to the adjective. Uh, this is just the first one from Google. Uh, having a flat horizontal surface. And that can at be the same size. Meetings, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see, it comes down to like you're going to view level because you believe in the globe. You're going to view level as level. It means uh, at the same distance from the center of the earth. Yeah, well, that's, we, we that's kind of have to if we're if we're trying to determine what something is. If we're trying to determine what the shape is, then we have to agree on common terms. And if we agree to use the terms level meaning the curve of the earth and flat meaning a tangential plane, then it would just make conversations between globe earthers and flat earthers easier. Because so it, when with surveyors, when they talk about level, they they literally mean the curve of the earth. You know, um, uh, the true level in surveying manuals is defined as the curve of the earth. And I could I could right now bring up 45 citations to demonstrate that the curve of the earth, when you're talking about the surface of the earth, is level. Uh, so yeah, but it's, it's, just, it's just about Is that geodetic it's, surveying? It's, well, geodetic surveying Think is what you'd use for um, large distances. Plain surveying... Um, Plain surveying is interesting because most, say, um, structures, roadways and stuff, they, they, they use plain surveying because plain surveying is over a distance of about 260 kilometers, right? Because due to the size of the Earth, 260 kilometers can be viewed as a, a flat plane with a, deviance of about zero, a deviation of about 0 0.05 degrees, right? So plain what, surveyors, they work, in, they work in in the smaller areas, but they still can yeah, take the curve of the earth into, into to account um, when they use elevation references. However, geodetic surveyors are surveyors that survey larger areas of, above 260 kilometers, and they have yes. to take the curve of the earth into account because well, that, that, you know, would, otherwise they wouldn't they be able to, to measure things they, properly. They pre-assume it. As, no, they, they, they don't uh, assume the it because um, the, the, the methods that they use um, and some of the important things about when, when they're trying to um, determine like atmospheric conditions is that they are able to quantify refraction and they will do it in different times and constantly measure what the temperature of the air is to know what the refractive index is, to know what the light is doing so that they're able to well, accurately say what they are seeing based on the leveling of the marker points that they're using is you know oh look well that appears to show a curve well that must mean that this section of the earth has a curve there's no assumptions yeah. made just the measurements that they the, the methods that they use show them that there's a curve there the the steps that geodetic servers surveyors take is they start out with that it, that it's a, a globe that's the first thing they do they start well, with, they, they, they with know it's a globe, it's a globe. Uh, just let me go through the steps one second they start out with it with the belief that it's a globe. Then they turn that into a global ellipsoid and global geoid. Then they turn the global ellipsoid and ge global geoids into l more localized 
ellipsoids and geo ellipsoids and geoids of a continent or whatever, and then they turn it into more local again. They keep localizing the lo the glo the uh, ellipsoids and geoids uh, down to a country level, and then they turn everything into Cartesian reference systems, which are flat and motionless planes. But that's they, what they do. Their last step is to turn everything into a Cartesian reference system. Well, that's for when you're like trying to make maps and stuff. That's that's different. But they they measure the curve of the Earth. You know, that's what their measurements show. There there is no assumptions when they're actually doing the measurements. Like if we look at the the massive surveying um, operations, like the uh, the Meridional Arc of the Indias or the American Arc of the Parallel. You know, they didn't make any assumptions. They just made measurements, and when they put all the big measurements that they had together, it formed a sphere. And it's not just them that did it. Every single one of these surveying teams that did that around the world from 1700 onwards all measured that the Earth has a radius of approximately 3,950 miles, depending on where you are. Okay. In the 11th century, <clears throat> al Biruni went to the top of a, a mountain, a high mountain in da Nandana, which is present-day Pakistan. And he used an astrolabe to take a dip measurement to an horizon. And from this, he calculated the globe's 3,959-mile radius. Now, the problem with that is that how did he know which horizon was the geometric, physical geometric horizon of a globe? When we, we are told we never see that, and we are told that oh, we always see horizontal and flat. The horizon is never in one place. It's always moving its position. Within an hour, it can move its position. And I've watched it yeah. move its position within an hour. Further so if he had waited an hour, he would have got a different calculation. You started with explaining that he went up a high hill. And when you go up a, a high area, you remove the, a lot of the refractive conditions. The reason is because you change the lapse rate. Uh, and, and the lapse rate is the change in temperature over a distance. So say the first um, meter above the water, right? The temperature change in that meter is going to be a lot greater uh, as, as uh, a reference compared to the distance than if you took um, 500 meters, right? The actual ratio of change is going to be less the higher up you go, which means you get less um, of a lapse rate, which means the refractive conditions are less. So going up a lot higher is a great way to actually be able to see as close as possible to the geometric horizon. Okay, but there's two problems there with what you're saying. Number one is <clears throat> the lapse rate. That's more to do with optics. For the, for the globe, you have to have 7 over 6 R, as that <clears throat> is... That is the that is the refraction that that goes along with the curve uh, goes along yeah. with the calculation, right? The other problem is how did Al, Al Biruni know which horizon was correct? Because no matter how what high do you, you go, which horizon? he can only see one horizon. So he, well, he went, my point. He, he went yeah, on the horizon that point. he could see, and because of the fact exactly. that he was up a lot higher, meaning there was less refractive conditions means that he was pretty much seeing the geometric horizon. Yeah, it, it was, probably wasn't exactly 100% accurate because there is always going to be some refractive conditions. But because he was up a lot higher, meaning the lapse rate was different, meaning there was less overall refractive conditions, that, meaning that he had a better um, idea of what the geometric horizon was. What he was looking at was a distorted view of the horizon, but it was probably extremely close to the actual horizon because of the height that he was. But if I'm on the top of a mountain and the weather is bad, then I'll have a different angle to an horizon than I will if the weather is clear. So how did he know which, uh, well, which maybe, day and which time was correct? See, um, you're, are you talking about like literal you know, bad weather blocking the horizon? That, that's that's not blocking the horizon. The, the refractive it's not, conditions. It's not, it's not bad or good weather. It's just changing weather conditions. Yeah, will give I mean, you a different horizon. No matter how high you go. I mean, I, I, I have been up on the top of mountains, and I've seen horizons when the weather was more suitable for it. I've seen horizons at massive distances. And I could be up at the top of the same mountain when the weather is not so suitable, and the horizon is far more close. So how did he know if no one ever, if we don't, we're told we never see the geometric horizon. 
We can't see the geometric rise and we always see horizontal. This is what we're told. Uh, fl flat earthers are told this all the time. So how did he know when he saw this particular horizon, because there's only one horizon, how did he know, oh, that's the, the, uh, that's the uh, radius, the one that will be perfect for the radius? How did he know that? Well, to be honest, Brian, it's in the 1100s. I don't know the exact reasons why he was doing the measurements or what the weather was like on the day or, or anything around it. But what's, what's interesting is that he managed to get a radius which was very close to what we say it is now. And when we do measurements now, we get that same radius. Why is it that we always get the same thing? Well, uh, I would say it's down to pre-assumption. If you want to, we can go through how the, uh, ge the geodetic surveyors go about measuring, or sorry, calculating it. If you want, we can go through that. Um, I don't well, mind, because um, I mean, well, when it comes honestly, to Alberoni, uh, you can't prove what he did, as in, you can't, I'm asking you, how did he know this and that? You can't divine his thoughts. So no, it's kind no. of, and, it's and kind my, of like, my, I'm my asking the question, but I know you can't answer that is, um, my knowledge of surveying isn't one of my strong points yet. I'm still studying in the specific methods. Um, Rumpus has said that I said something wrong even in this stream. And if I am wrong about certain things about surveying, then I want to be corrected. So um, let me do some more studying on actual surveying methods, and then we can go over some of the actual calculations. How about that? Yeah, that's fine by me. I've okay. been looking at the surveying too, so uh, that's fine by me. Right. I'm okay with that. So, we, I can come back in another time for that. The, the other thing was, Brian, uh, about the Coriolis. Right. Yeah. And you, do, you want to, do you want to go through the, the pictures I have of the centre for anything? Or we just oh, yeah, no, let, let, let's um, do that if you want to now. I don't um, mind. Yeah, this yeah, just, yeah, I'm just going to share these just to, uh, just to finish off that part of what I was saying. Um, yeah. Greg. Uh, Where's the screen going? Give me one sec to get the screen up. No worries. Rumpus, um, you've got my email. Uh, maybe send me uh, an email with corrections to anything that I've said. Oh, God, why have I lost that screen? I think I might have shut... Oh, no, there it is. Uh, right, okay, are you sharing on Hangouts? Yeah, yeah, whenever it is. Okay, oh, come on. My computer's being slow, hold on. Come on, why can't I select that? There we go. Uh, okay, right, you're up. Okay, um, <clears throat> first thing I'll have to show, uh, let me see, will be my video of this. One second, Craig. Video. I must say, Brian, you're a lot calmer than you've been before. The conversation is actually yeah. managing to happen. Uh, yeah, well, look, if I'm dealing with a situation where it's kind of like, let's be honest, on your show, it's kind of like, uh, it, it is kind of like attack and attack, most a lot of the time. I know I've heard it, that's the way it's been. And when there, last week, I had uh, Team Skeptic there as well. So it was like I was coming in on the defensive. You understand what I mean? So I, I can deal with it either way. I can go relaxed or I can go, you know, whichever. Like, you know, I can do it. Now, I, this is just to show the leveling. The, not, it won't be level on the table left to right, but it will be level forward and back. This is just to show uh, my leveling on the table, forward to back, just before I show those photographs. So it's 0 0.1, 0 0.0 to 0 0.1, 1 0.0.2. And there's the jars. Um, and that's just, I'm just going to show with the, uh, with the, uh, I think I show it here now with the, um, or maybe I don't show it. I oh, know I show it in the photographs with, with that uh, laser level. That, uh, okay, that's all I need to show because, you know, the basic, I'm tilting my phone back there, that's why it's gone to 0.7. Yeah. Um, just to show that it was, that it was uh, level. Right. So this is when I'm when the phone is level, right, and the center frame uh, when the phone is being made level as 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, around 0 0.1. That's as level as I can make the phone on the table. 
So I'm just going to go down with these. I jar all of this up next to the camera, and I pull it back, and I pull it back, and I keep going. And it, this is just showing a difference in angular size change. And that, it doesn't really matter. It's not something we haven't seen before. But this part is important. <clears throat> The red dot I showed in the pictures in a second, that, that, that was lower and it raises up because there's an incline in this table towards the back. So when I have the camera, um, when I have my camera, my phone in portrait, I just have it in portrait mode. It's got, it was easier to get more level that way. When I have it in uh, as level as it can be, because it's level and the table has an incline towards the back, it's not perpendicular with the table. So if I go down to here, that yellow line is where my actual lens is. So by leveling my camera, it brought my center, level, my center of my lens down. So that yellow line is actually, because on, on iPhone 5, the camera lens is just over four and a half inches high. Um, and that's just over halfway up that, uh, this, uh, this second tile here. So that's actually my center frame right there. Or that is actually my, where my camera lens is, I should say right there on that yellow line. But because it's not perpendicular, it's not at a right angle to the table anymore because I had to level it. So because I had to level it forward, uh, it's not at a, at a right angle to the table. So consequently, that brings the center frame down. So that was going against me because as soon as I leveled it, that was a problem because the table is not level, so it's not right at a right angle. It's not perpendicular. So there's no point in me, there was no point in me showing you the same as I showed you last week as it was just going to be it was just going to be the same as I showed you. And you can have the same argument saying, well, it's not level. So what was the point in showing you that? But just to show, uh, I think I have, uh, oh, no, that's all of those photographs. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was just going to show you the, uh, the, uh, okay. the table yeah. being in inclined. But I can show you that if you want to see it anyway. But uh, <clears throat> that's what I wanted to show. Just that, that as soon as I leveled my camera, that uh, it brought the center frame down low as opposed to four and a half inches is where it should be. Yeah, you which, I mean? like you said, kind of goes against what you were saying, right? Yeah, because it's not perpendicular anymore, because the table yeah. is not level, yeah. so it's not perpendicular. Right. Um, so do you accept that there's a possibility that you could be wrong uh, about your assumption with perspective? As far as things dropping below center frame, what, what I'll show now before we go away from this, and I'll show you that thing I wanted to, uh, I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> Uh, I'll show you this. Now, this is not a gotcha. I don't mean it like that. I'm just showing you an example of someone we both know. Okay. One second now. Now, uh, I'm just going to fix this up and I'll share my, my screen again. I meant to show this a minute ago. Uh, bring your screen back up. One sec. Okay, no worries. I should have shown this. All right, are you sharing? Should be, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is Moyes Davis's photograph. The, this is the first one he brought out, the first uh, observation he did uh, that, he, that he got a lot of notoriety for. <clears throat> now, his camera height is actually the exact same as the top of this center bridge stanch stanchion yeah, on that page. Yeah, He was not... Yeah, yeah, and because uh, even and that's the he even has it on video of him going down a, a couple of meters down off of the trick point uh, down the hill because I think there was I can't remember what he said I think he said there was too many people at the trick point or something on the day and he went down to a different place but here his center lens is pointed up in the air now this is a zoomed in photograph the actual full photograph shows that bridge at a bit more of a distance because it's I think it's like twenty five miles from home or something like that, that bridge is. Uh, it's a good distance anyway. Uh, so technically, this is where I'm putting my marker here. This is his actual center frame, because this would be in line with his center frame. This should be his center frame, because they're both 600, they're both 210 meters above. His, his center frame and the top of that bridge stanchion are both 210 meters above uh, sea level. So that would be, should be in exact line with him, because he has direct line of sight to it. So keep him on a globe, that should be his center frame, if you understand what I mean. But it doesn't appear to be because, you no, know, I'm not saying he leveled up his camera or anything like that, but if he was to level the camera, it would have meant, like if he was to level, level it with, with, the, with the bridge stanchion, it would seem like he has a pointed down to it. You're not going to I don't know if, it, if he leveled it, what would happen, but 
uh, I see this a lot in a lot of observations where the center frame is over something that is of the same height. So I'm not saying that what I'm doing on the table, because the table is not 100% correct, and and uh, okay, to try to get my phone to be absolutely perpendicular and at a right angle, maybe if I'm le having it as it is natural, maybe it's leaning back too much. If I, if I uh, level it, it's leaning forward too much. I don't know. I'm not, not going to make the claim that this will always happen. But it does happen that angular size change will cause things to get smaller in the distance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no one disagrees that, that that's going to you know, make things get smaller. I just don't see any reason it makes it drop down. And, and, that, and that's... Well, I think that's the crux yeah, of the well, issue, uh, that there is no no explanation in what we know about angular size change to change the relative position of things. Um, now, with, with the particular photo you're showing, um, which I think is, the, is, is this one, I think it's a, a screenshot of the video, which itself is is larger. Um, I'd have to double check that. But... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's only a screenshot. It's, only a, it's a zoomed in screenshot of that. Yeah. It's actually, yeah, a, it's actually which, a big which, which is obviously going to change where the center frame is and stuff when you zoom in, right? Well, yeah, but it's still at the same height, if you understand what I mean. That was my point, but it's still at the same height. Uh, the, the, the top of the bridge stanchion is still the exact same height above sea level yeah. as Moyles well, is. Yeah. And, yeah, so and, it appears and, to be lower. Yeah, but if um, in the zoomed out version, the actual um, red line that you see would, would be higher up. Um, it's just because he zoomed in on that and made enough space for him to type that above. It's not, you know, th this isn't what his camera actually saw and isn't a good representative of what center frame was. In the actual video, when you're looking at this, that the top of the bridge pillar is the center of the frame. But it's just because this is a screenshot of it zoomed in. Yeah, yes, I understand that. But that also helps my argument, does it not? Because mm. it's... Because things are small, like this, the top of the bridge stanchion is still the same height as his camera. You know, yeah, it is yeah, still you, the same you, height as you the can camera. Ch you can change any, the center frame wherever you put the center frame wherever you want. If you're zooming in on something post picture, that's the point. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an actual. You know, I could crop this so the the center of the frame. Well, the the you know the if I cropped this like I could put this bit right in the corner down here. It doesn't change yeah. the fact that from the actual photo that the video was taken from, this was actually up here before yeah, he zoomed my in point, for the screenshot. My point with it is that if you look at his original video before he, before he got the screenshot, if you look at the original video, um, this looks very small. The stanchion, the bridge looks very small in the distance because he's literally 25, I think he's like 25 miles from the bridge yeah, he's or quite something far. like that. He's and like, another, like, right at the other end of the fourth. fourth. Yeah, it's a good distance from the bridge. So the bridge, due to angular size change, has gotten very small, even though it's actually at the same height as him above sea level. <clears throat> that is really my point on angular size change. That is the point I'm making with angular size change, as opposed to everything dropped through a center frame. It's like at that kind of distance, angular size change is so much that something like that will appear to be down small in your, in your view simply because of angular size change. And you have the atmosphere. Yeah, but, but, uh, but again, there's no reason for it to go down it, it, because of angular size. You know, angular size would make everything go towards the middle, no matter how far away it was. This, you know, the fact that things rise up to there and go down to there doesn't change because they're further away. Well, look, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe his camera wasn't 100% level whichever, but if he was to level up the center of his frame with the bridge stanchion as he could see it in the distance, it would look like, to him, to him it would seem like he's pointing his camera down to it. And this is the same, this is the same argument I was having with Jesse Kozwalski, is that due to angular size change, it would appear that he'd have to tip his, tilt his, uh, his, um, his crosshairs down to meet the other teodoli or the, the post at the other side of the lake. Uh, uh, whereas it's only angular size change, it only appears that way it only appears that it's gone below when it's yeah, not really but but again why does it appear to drop down there's no reason it should what jesse's saying is based on the laws of perspective if the earth was perfectly a horizontal plane then there's no reason for the crosshairs to have dropped down below where they have done that you know, that that, sh that shouldn't have happened if the earth is flat the only explanation well, is if... that it, it is dropped down slightly 
Yeah, but if you look at what I showed earlier with the olive jars, that showed a similar thing to this. Not really, because nothing you, know, you had was leveled off, and that, that's the point. But well, even if it was like leveled said, off, you let still me have that some, angular size change. I think I need to have a conversation with the rumpus, because he seems to have pulled me up on a couple of things that I've said wrong. Yeah. Um, so okay. let, let, me, let me do some studying on um, geodex oh, in particular, yeah. and we can have another conversation about that and how they, they actually do their measurements. But I did want to yeah, talk okay. about no um, not just yours, but the flat earth for misunderstanding of what Coriolis is. I'm not sure where it actually came from, the, the, the whole argument of, oh, well, if there's Coriolis, then the atmosphere can't be moving with the earth, because that, that isn't what Coriolis is. But do you understand, you see, from our point of view, when we we're arguing this with G, the problem is, is that it seems that you're arguing for why we don't see it, and we're arguing, arguing for why we should see it. What do you mean, why we don't see it? Well, most of the time we're told you, you don't see it and you won't see it. Like, going by the definitions, I, I can put up some definitions there of uh, Coriolis effect. And going by the, the, um, going by the definitions, uh, we should see it. Uh, we should see it if, if uh, oil is... Screen share. One second, I'll go to... One second now. Let's get the right one. It is hot here. My hands are sweating. I'm trying to... it's, it's stuffy in Scotland tonight as well. Yeah, it is stuffy. It is stuffy big time. So this is just, first of all, uh, if you... Wait, uh, can you see that now at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is just from Wikipedia, just to show a visual of what the uh, yeah. Coriolis effect is. If uh, the red dot would be the person on the uh, the person on the non-inertial reference frame. So the black ball is moving in a straight line, but it appears to deviate. Yeah, uh, of course. Sorry. Now, and and that, it's that, appearing that, to deviate. That, that that's the important thing, right? Um, from from the outside, it, it will just look like it's going in a straight line. But because of the fact that the Earth is... The tangential velocity of Earth is different at different points, the same as, um, you know, the centre of the disk is moving slower than the outside of the disk, even though the whole thing is rotating at the same speed, right? It's that difference in the tangential velocity that would mean for an, an observer in the inertial reference frame it would appear to deviate for them because they are part of the reference frame that it's all moving in. So even though from the outside observer, it appears it's going in a straight line, for the person that's in the same reference frame as the thing that is moving from one area of tangential velocity to another, it would deviate. But that, that doesn't, See, it doesn't really change the, the facts of what the Coriolis is. Um, this is just trying to explain what you would see. What the Coriolis actually is, is a, I mean, and it's actually referred to in, in several physics books as the law of conservation of angular momentum. Um, and that, that's what they're trying to talk about. The reason why the ball deviates in, in that is because it's conserving the momentum it has from one point on the disc to the other, which would, from the observer on the disc, mean that it would move ahead of the spin or be below the spin, depending on which way it's been moved. So, you... the yeah, I've read into the whole. I've read into the uh, conservation of momentum in connection to the Coriolis effect. Now, the conservation of momentum and the Coriolis effect—they're two separate things. The, uh, the conservation of momentum. Uh, let me just give an example. <clears throat> if I'm sitting on a, a children's roundabout, you know the ones you spin around. Yes. And I have my back to the centre, and I have a ball in my hand. Yeah. And that's spinning around. If I throw that ball at a 45 degree angle directly in a straight line away from me, then I am retaining the uh, angular momentum of the, the non-inertial non reference frame, which is the roundabout. And the ball is going to retain the linear momentum of me throwing it in a straight line. So to me, it's going to appear from my position that it deviates. But it's not. It's actually going in a straight line. But visually, to me, it's going to appear to deviate. Yeah. So and, well, and that, the, the that, reason that, you almost had it right there with the reason it appears to deviate, right? At the point that you're right, so you're sitting in the middle of the roundabout, okay? And you're looking mm -hmm. towards the outside, yeah? 
Yes. Right. So the ball in your hand before you throw it has a a tangential velocity, a linear velocity of you know a slow movement around the center. Okay. Now when you throw it outwards, okay, it is moving into an area on the roundabout that has a faster tangential velocity, and because the ball has maintained it, it, its inertia, it's conserved its momentum that you had, which was less of a tangential velocity, it would appear to drift behind the actual rotation of the, the roundabout because it's maintained the linear velocity it had when you threw it. And it's the same, um, and, and that's what happens if um, you're on the Earth or at the equator, which is moving with a tangential velocity of 1,050 miles an hour, right? And if you were to fire a ballistic missile from the equator north, when the, uh, the missile leaves the firing mechanism, it has that tangential velocity of 1,050 miles an hour, right? But then it travels north. So then it moves into an area on the Earth that has a tangential velocity of 900 miles an hour. But because the missile, the, the, the ballistic missile, um, not missile, it's not powered, it's not got rocket or anything, it's just a ballistic uh, projectile, right? Because it maintained that initial momentum that it had of 1,050 miles an hour from the equator, that means that it is literally going in a linear velocity faster than the area of the Earth it moves into, which means it would drift ahead of the rotation. And that's what um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, right? He said that um, the, the winning field goal was likely assisted by a one-eighth deflection to the right imparted by the Earth's rotation. The reason that happened is because at the point the person kicked the ball, it had a lower linear velocity than when it got to the field goal, which meant that it drifted towards the outside of the field, uh, to, sorry, towards the inside of the field goal and instead of the other way because it maintained its momentum. So, and I could actually um, bring up a lot of physics books that describe the Coriolis force as the law of conservation of momentum. Well, I, I have a problem with it being called a force because it, a pseudo force maybe, but a yeah, force yeah. no. Because right. It is just a visual effect. I, uh, it's I not, mean, it's not just can, a visual, it, visual effect. It, it's, it depends on the reference frame. And you're right, in the same way that gravity isn't a physical force, the Coriolis force isn't a physical force. It's what in physics we refer to as an emergent force or a... Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's sometimes called a pseudo force or a, um, a imaginary force because it only exists because of something else, and that's why the main definition that that, that I always used in physics was an emergent force. It happens because it, of something else happening. You can do some calculations and calculate as though there is a force there, but there isn't. That force is uh, a a consequence of something else happening. So it appears there's a force because of the, everything else that's going on. I just want to read out this definition. Uh, I think it was from Torco, this one was from um, <clears throat> Coriolis effect definition. The Coriolis effect is an apparent effect, an illusion produced by a rotating frame of reference. This type of effect is also known as a fictitious force, yeah, or fictitious I think that was the word you're looking for, inertia yeah. force. Yeah. yeah. The Coriolis effect occurs when an object moving along a straight path is viewed from a non-fixed frame of reference. Yeah. Typically, this moving frame of reference is the Earth, which rotates at a fixed speed. When you view an object in the air that is following a straight path, the object will appear to lose its course because of the rotation of the Earth. Yeah. Now, that's obviously, the they're going to use the, the rotation of the Earth. Yeah. That's the important thing there. The part of the definition you read there uh, is that it would appear to lose its, its momentum. Right. Well, sorry, could you just repeat that last bit again? Just so you can use the words right. Uh, 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 will appear to lose its course. Because well, appear, of the to, lose, appear of to lose its course, right? Yeah. So it's saying it will drift ahead of or behind the the rotation, right? Now, what that means is that there is an acceleration happening, which means that there has to be some kind of force, and you, that's why you can do the calculations as it appearing as a force, but there isn't a force there. And as, you know, yes, you write it. It only exists when you're looking at it from an outside reference frame. It doesn't really exist. 
But in the same way, centr centrifugal force doesn't really exist. It's a consequence of, of an inward force from cent you know, centripetal acceleration, right? But you can still do calculations to, to calculate a, a centrifugal force. And you can still do calculations to calculate a force from gravity. Gravity isn't a physical force. The, when, when we say the force of gravity, we don't literally mean that gravity is a force. We mean that the force is a consequence of something else that is happening because of gravity. It doesn't really exist, but we can calculate it because it's there within a Newtonian world. Well, we should have a, maybe another debate on the gravity, the gravity thing. That would probably be a good debate to have. Too. That's one of my um, next topics. Well, if you want to have that, we can have that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, because I, I kind of go for that too. Um, <clears throat> as far as the Coriolis effect, see, our argument is, I'm going to say our because I'm speaking for basically flat out. Our argument is, is that, that it doesn't matter where you are if you're on a rotating non-inertial uh, non reference, if you're, if you're in the non-inertial reference frame, uh, if that is rotating, if that is moving, if that is a non-inertial reference frame, then as soon as you, something, a projectile or something moving in the air above you, whether it be powered or non-powered flight, then as soon as you see that, that should deviate. But we don't see it deviating. We don't see well, anything deviating. That's mainly to do that's the problem. Um, with the fact that the Earth isn't rotating that fast. It's only rotating at 15 degrees per hour. So, and due to that fact and the fact that the Earth is so large, for us to be able to see the effect, it has to go over a great distance. Um, snipers wouldn't normally take Coriolis into account because the majority of snipers aren't going to be shooting over, say, a kilometer, right? But if you're going over a kilometer, um, depending on where you are on the Earth, you are going to have to start taking these things into account. Um, you know, uh, if you're on the equator firing east to west or west to east, you would have to take the Coriolis into account because it's going to affect how much the bullet drops or raises based on which way you're firing. The same way if you're firing north or south, uh, and it's over a big enough distance, you're going to have to start taking it into account. Um, planes don't have to take it into account because the Coriolis force that you can calculate is very small. And there's you know, motors and stuff on a plane that are creating much larger forces than the Coriolis deviation that would be there. You know, it, it, so we do see it and it has to be taken into account for a lot of things, which is why most artillery manuals, you know, have charts for calculating the Coriolis. Well, uh, the, my problem with it is, is this, right? My problem with that argument is this, is that <clears throat> we cannot find any evidence for it other than some, some sniper manuals have it in it. Now, according to uh, Kiwi and other people who are in the military, who, who are master gunners and worked in, that, worked in that field, that it's not taken into account in reality. Well, it depends where the they problem. are. It, it really I mean, does depend where they are uh, and you know what direction they're firing in and things like that. But um, I can absolutely assure you, artillery firing over a large distance definitely need to take these things into account. And it, it's part of basic training using the equipment that fire ballistic projectiles over large distances to, to take into account these things, otherwise they don't hit their targets. That's why during... Um, when the, uh, the the British were fighting, I'm pretty sure it was either the Germans or the Argentines, uh, we, and they were firing south of the equator, um, most of their missiles, like they missed 1,500 missiles because they were more than twice the distance of, you know, away from where they thought they should be firing. And that's because the charts that they were using were, you know, were literally made for you being used in the Northern Hemisphere. So they had to reverse the calculations to to make it work. And once they reverse the calculations, they ended up winning the confrontation because they could hit their target. So there, there is instances throughout history where it, it has to be taken into account. See, I've heard these stories before, but something you said a few minutes ago is, is going to be a big sticking point. When you said airplanes don't have to take it into account, if there's something rotating underneath the airplane, then it's going to have to take that into account. Nothing's There's no way around under, that. Nothing's rotating underneath the airplane. Well, how can something be rotating underneath a bullet or, or a ballistic? Because the, a ballistic missile, a ballistic projectile doesn't use the atmosphere 
for its flight path, whereas an aeroplane literally uses the atmosphere to to create lift. You know, so if the atmosphere is rotating with the Earth, then so is a plane. But a ballistic projectile doesn't use the atmosphere as a means of propulsion, so it doesn't take the atmosphere into account. You would have, if there's winds and stuff, you would have to take that into account. Yes, but because the way that an aircraft operates, literally using the atmosphere to give it lift and to create its propulsion, n no, the, the Earth is not going to be rotating underneath it. And uh, even ballistic, um, I almost missed that there. N nothing is rotating underneath the ballistic projectile, right? That's not how it works. The, what's, it's the fact that the Earth is rotating will mean that the projectile will either move ahead or behind of the rotation. That doesn't mean that the Earth is rotating underneath it. It means it's maintaining its momentum from a different linear velocity. But see, that's what you have to tell me there. Uh, to me, it just absolutely doesn't make any sense whatsoever because if the Earth is moving, then planes, doesn't matter if they're using the air, the same ballistic missiles are flying through the air. They're using the air too because no. they, are, they, are, they are also using, they are going through the atmosphere, going through the air. Yeah, but the they, they're, they're, they're here not using the air for their That's why you use the motor tolerance. But it doesn't matter if they're not using it for propulsion. The it point does. is they're flying through the same air. They're still flying over the same air. Yeah, but a ballistic isn't using the atmosphere for its means of lift and propulsion. And if the atmosphere Yeah, but that doesn't moved, matter. Planes it, it, don't have to go... Play, yeah, but that okay, doesn't change the fact that if it's it rotating, does. it's rotating. If it's not, it's not. Yeah, no one's denying that it's rotating. I mean, rotating. there's, there's that's, all kinds of calculations. Why you, that's why you get these deviations, because of the rotation. And the fact that because something is rotating, it means that at different points, it has a different tangential velocity. Engines on a plane are... You know, given a, a much greater force than the calculable force of Coriolis. So, um, yeah, but Coriolis yeah. is a visual effect. I mean, if the Earth is rotating, look, that's from, why you from, from, from a non inertial me reference plane, it, it is, yes, right? From a non inertial reference plane, it's a visual effect, but within the reference plane that you're in, it's a calculable force. F equals MA. These are things that you can't deny. If there is an acceleration, which from the inertial reference frame there appears to be, there has to be something causing that acceleration. And nobody can deny that well, F equals it, MA. I don't, so you have to assign I don't a force have, to it. Well, I would, I would deny it. I would de deny force equals MA. What? I, I have a problem, with, I have a problem with, uh, with Newton and some of the things he said. I personally have a problem with them. Wait, you have an issue with Newton's laws of motion? I do have a problem with, with, with his laws of motion, yeah. For instance, his third, his third law of motion. <clears throat> For instance, his third law of motion. Uh, would this be a good summation of it? <clears throat> For every uh, action, there was an equal and op opposite, re opposite reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, perpetual motion disproves that. There is no perpetual motion. That's the point. If that was true, then there would be perpetual motion. No. Yes, there would be, because no, that it, would mean it, it, that... There, Something there, would, there has to would, be have the same, would output the same energy as it's put into it. But you can't, you can't swing a pendulum and expect it to keep swinging. It won't. Um, a pendulum in a, uh, a vacuum swings a lot faster than one that's not in a vacuum, but you also have to take into yeah, account but we're the, living in, the yeah, gravity but, and stuff. So, um, but hang on now, that, this that is the laws of motion really, based that, on reality. Not no, in a vacuum. Newton, We're not living in Newton, a vacuum. Newton's laws of motions uh, apply universally, and if you are in a vacuum, you're actually taking away a lot of the other forces, right? And the fact that you have an equal and opposite reaction means that if I punch my hand, my hand is exerting a force onto my fist the same that my fist is exerting a force onto my hand, it, because there's an equal and an opposite reaction. That that can't be denied. That but that does not but mean that's that you're going to get equal perpetual and motion. Reaction, though. Perpetual motion means that you can just put one bit of energy into a system and it go forever. Uh, you... An equal and opposite reaction would be that if you punch your hand, that your hand doesn't move. But you can move your hand by punching it. A pendulum swings. If I start a pendulum swinging, it will eventually stop. I'll have to start it again if I want it to swing. That disproves 
It's the third law of motion. No, it really does. <laughs> it doesn't disprove the third law at all. It actually demonstrates exactly what it's talking about. Because there is so many other forces that you have to take into account with a pendulum. And uh, my, I suppose my hand was a bad example because I can decide how much force my hand is applying. But if I was to punch a wall as hard as I could, my hand would get hurt as, you know, because the wall is applying the same force in the opposite direction of what happens. Newton's laws of motion are literally not, not something that's really up for discussion. They've been demonstrated absolutely well, to be fact. They, but they are, up, they are up for discussion. That's the problem. They are I'm, up for I'm, I'm amazed that anyone can disagree with Newton's third law. Well, I've just, well, you debunked it yourself by saying there's no such thing as perpetual motion. Because no. you have, to, for, the reason there's no such thing as perpetual motion is you have to put more energy in than the energy that's output. So no. that's why it doesn't work. If, if Newton's no, no, perpetual third motion law was, can't exist was correct, because perpetual motion would mean that there was energy always being created. That's different from having an equal and an opposite reaction. No, because equal is equal. Yeah. So like, if I, so like the, say, if uh, I, like, if I like that's the, the, Brian, that's what that's what recoil in a gun is. Like that's literally yeah, Newton's that's... third law in, mo in 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 reality. I mean, I've fired a lot of guns in my time. You know, trust me, recoil is a thing because of Newton's third law. For every action, there is a reaction, but it's not always equal. No, it's equal and opposite, always. No, because the perpetual motion disproves that. But no, if it was, there is then no we would have perpetual motion. motion. No, no, because... That's my point. No, perpetual if motion... If it was, means, we would no, have Brian, perpetual Brian, motion. Brian, you're wrong about that, because perpetual motion means that there is always energy being created. You can put a certain amount of energy into a system, and once that energy is used up, that's the equal and opposite force. But perpetual motion would mean you put energy into a system, and then it keeps generating energy. That's not equal and opposite. That is But that is magic. equal. That is what equal means. That is equal. No, That's right. why my problem is... Right, if I was to put a like, certain amount of energy into something, right, once that energy mm -hmm. is used up, the system can no longer yeah. do what it wants, right? So I have to put charge into a battery to operate um, my, my, my camera, right? And once yeah. the energy of the, the battery has been used up, the camera will no longer work because, you know, it's the, the energy that's been put in has gone. If perpetual motion was a thing, once I put the energy into my camera, then I would never need to charge it again. If I swing a pendulum, right, I swing the pendulum, bit by bit that pendulum slows down, right? If the third law of, of Newton was correct, then that pendulum would not slow down. Of course it would, because there's because going to be, there's going to be every, diminishing well, returns of energy. I mean, I, I, like, 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 listen, listen, right, for one thing, what happens when the, the pendulum's going click, 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 you can hear that click, right? Each one of those clicks that you can hear is a little bit of the energy that's being put into the system being expended. And once all that energy is expended, it will no longer work because there's equal and opposite. Basically, entropy disproves the third law, Newton's third law. No, it doesn't. Because of entropy. Mm. Well, if, if, I, if, I'm, if I swing a pendulum and that pendulum slows down, it shows that there isn't an equal and opposite reaction. Because a pendulum is a good, a good example. There isn't an equal and opposite reaction, because if there is an equal and opposite reaction, that pendulum wouldn't slow down. No, you're saying exactly the opposite of what it is, Brian. And you put a certain amount of energy into it, right? So I pick up one side of the pendulum and let it go, right? It goes down yeah. and, it, and it hits the ball, right? Certain things happen. Yeah. One of the things that happened is that it transfers some of that energy through all the balls and pushes the one up the other side. But other things that happen is friction from it moving through the air is gonna create a tiny bit of heat. There's sound that requires energy. There's gonna be heat when the balls clack together. All that energy that you put into it by lifting it up and letting it go is being expended bit by bit until it stops moving. If perpetual motion was a thing, you could put energy into the system and it would just continuously go no matter how much energy it puts out. But that doesn't happen, which demonstrates that Newton's third law is correct. Well, no, I'd have to say it differently. It demonstrates that it's not correct what? if he's saying it's equal, because it's not equal. 
Of course it's equal. You can it's do not the equal. I mean, can, if Angel uh, improves that. No, you can do the calculation. Entropy, entropy right, just proves Brian, it's Brian, what, what, what do you think equal means? That means that if I can calculate how much energy has been put into the system and how much energy the system has expended, and they will be equal. But equal means that there's an equal result, an equal, uh, sorry, reaction from an action. Or is there isn't an equal reaction. Because, as I said, with the pendulum again, I'll use the pendulum again. If I swing a pendulum, it will slow down due to yeah. entropy. Yeah. So that disproves that there is an equal and opposite reaction. No, no, it, but there, it is, there, there is, is an opposite reaction. No, there is an equal, an equal and opposite reaction because you have to think about the, the sum of all the forces, Brian. Right? You're not just thinking about the pendulum and its movement. There's other things happening as well. Other systems are at place. There's friction, there, there, there's, which is heat. There's, uh, you know, the sound, which is energy. All of these are parts of the energy that you originally put into the system. Perpetual motion means that a system would continuously create its own energy, which doesn't happen, which shows that Newton's third law is correct because you can only get a certain amount out of a system once you put energy in, equal to the amount of energy that you put in. Well, we live in a perpetual motion uh, system, as we, we are, do. because... It, well, it, it is because it's always, recyc always recycling the uh, energy. That's energy not, is never created or destroyed. It's always a recycling. That's not motion. Um, Brian, we receive it's energy. It's not. Brian, it Brian, is. Brian, Brian, it, is. Brian, it never stops we, being what it is. Goodness me. We receive energy from the sun. Yeah. So, which is, does the same thing every day and every month and every year. Yeah, it does we, the same are, thing. It does the same thing in the sun. We are constantly receiving energy from the sun. And that energy from the sun comes from the fact that the fuel source of the sun is slowly being used up in nuclear fusion. Yeah, well, we, we, don't, look, we don't know what the sun is. So we absolutely do we know what have. the sun is. We, we've met uh, quite a few no, probes there. We'll, we'll stick to the laws of motion for, and the Coriolis for the moment. Here's we, a, I'll a have photo that, that a friend of mine has we, taken of the sun. We'll have the... Uh, I just have to stop my... We'll have that debate in our time about the sun. <clears throat> um, See, the sun, we don't know. Like, I, I could debate. I, that's, another, that's a separate debate about what the sun is. I don't mind having that. But I'm saying that's going to be a separate debate. Just for fun, Brian, what do you think the sun is? What? I don't I have no idea, Greg, what the oh, sun well, is. I, I have I no don't. idea what it is. Well, I know that you, you uh, believe you do. No, but I, I don't see I, how you I, could. I believe that we can measure the things coming from the sun, so we know the byproducts of fusion. Um, spectroscopy is, is very good for telling us what something is. Um, also, we've sent a bunch of probes okay. to the sun. Okay, let's, let's um, talk, oh, one second, let's talk about the spectroscopy. <clears throat> let's talk about spectroscopy. This is, uh, you're talking about spectroscopy done through the atmosphere, through everything, to, right, to, show, to supposedly tell us that the sun is we've hydrogen. We've got yes. satellites in space that do spectroscopy as yeah, well. Yeah, well, that's, they, they have to prove gas pressure without a container first, because no, that's, that's an argument from... Yeah, well, that's an argument from a delta X position. You no, have to not. prove X first. No, we don't. Well, it is, because you're pre-assuming it all to be real before you've proven it. So that's no, a, no, a it's, been, it's, all, it's all been demonstrated That's another already. argument again. It's all been demonstrated already, hmm? Brian. Um, gas, no, it hasn't been. Gas pressure been. Uh, without a container is a stupid thing to say. I mean... That's not even what the... How is a stupid is. thing to say when nobody can provide a, uh, a demonstration of it? I have, plenty of times. How did you show a demonstration of gas pressure without a container? Okay, so if I could show you gas pressure right next to a vacuum with no barrier between them, is that acceptable? Are you talking about plasma? Yes, ionized gas. Plasma within a vacuum. Plasma within a vacuum. Plasma uh -huh. that, can, that has uh, electromagnetic properties because it's plasma. That's not gas. Plasma uh, is the fourth state of matter. So what? Because I've seen what you're talking uh, about. Wait, I've, wait, seen, wait, I've seen that Brian, before. Brian, stop one sec. The second law of thermodynamics does not refer to just gas. So it doesn't matter what it is. It does because gas, gas has a particular... Gas has a particular uh, um, um, uh, behavior. There are gas molecules that are unbonded. They move about in all directions at yeah, 700 meters a second. Yeah, they also That's get what they do. They're, all, they're a, unimpeded. Uh, they, so well, if you don't they, have they that have an overarching force of 
downwards acting on them in 9.8 meters per second. I can show you a demonstration of that. No, but, that's, that's a calculation. Um, that's a no, calculation, not a measurement. Oh, no, you can measure a downwards force. It's called a scale. No, you can't. There's no downward anything with gas. Gas goes in every direction. No, it doesn't. You can't. You only can't with, only with its gas initial downward, it, only, with it. only with its initial energy. Once that initial uh, kinetic energy is expended you know, and there is no other forces acting on it, the only force left is gravity. The only the only way to stop gas going up is to give it a barrier that is yeah. more dense than the gas itself. No, no, you don't. Uh, density isn't really what important. What is the density of gravity? You, barrier, barrier is an important word. No, it has the, to be more dense. Uh, the laws there, of density state wait, this. Wait, there, there is a barrier. That's the thing. That this is what flat earthers ignore quite a lot. There is a barrier. That what is the barrier? The, the energy required to escape the ground, the, the downward force that acts on everything. No, that, that it is doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with it. If, if yes, the it sky is a vacuum, if the sky is a vacuum, right, if the sky is a vacuum, then all the gas molecules are going to go there because no, that's no, what no. gas does. It always fills, it will always equalize into the available right. volume. All right, let, let me put it for you like this, okay? A gas molecule in space has zero forces acting on it, okay? Now, if you put Earth next to it, the only force acting on that gas molecule is the force because of gravity. So, but these that, are all, you know, this is all delta x arguments. No, it's not you have because not these are all things that have been demonstrated without a container. Uh, you have to prove gas pressure plasma without is a container. Ionized gas, that's so that's easy. There but that's go. plasma. That's plasma in What's plasma? within plasma is the fourth state of matter. What is it though? It's not it's not gas anymore. What is that's it? That's like though? showing water. No, 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 no. actually, uh, what is plasma? Tell me what it actually is. Uh, it's it comes. I'm not sure 100 percent what it is. Right. I just know it's, it's not gas. Ionized, it's ionized. Uh, listen, it's ionized I, gas. It's That's ionized right. gas, which means that it's gas that yeah. basically had the electron stripped away from it. But it doesn't, still it doesn't have matter, gas behavior. And the second yeah, law but it doesn't of thermo, have gas behavior. But so is water wait, wait, and wait, solid. Wait, wait. The second law of thermodynamics does not apply just to gas. No, it applies to everything. Exactly. So why in yes. this system? Um, is the second law of thermodynamics being apparently broken? Because it, it's not been apparently broken because that's plasma. So it has electromagnetic properties. So it's electromagnetism that's keeping it there. Okay. And it's, and it's, uh, and it, it, to point out something else here, and there's, there's a vacuum. Force. There's, you know, it's within a vacuum, and that vacuum is within a container also. You, yeah, need, a so vacuum, you vacuum need a container space, for a vacuum and for gas pressure. The vacuum of space is You have to have container. a container for both. The vacuum of space like is that, in the that, container. It's cool. But we yeah, but how, vacuum, how can you have, you can't have a vacuum, a you cool. can't have a vacuum without a container, and you certainly can't have yeah, a vacuum I've, I've next just, to a Brian, gas pressure, Brian, I'm just trying to and say the to gas you, not equalized Brian, into it. Like Brian, you can, you Brian, can't I, do I that. need to stop talking now. I'm trying to say to you that there is a um, container. It's called the universe. And space isn't a vacuum, no, it's a low-pressure no, system. That's not a demonstration. You have to be able to prove your demonstration. Like, that's, de that's delta, delta, delta. X. No, it's not. You have to prove X. You have to prove X. Because it's, you're arguing from it, a it, delta it, X point. No, we, we, uh, we, point you're, 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 you want to prove the universe prove exists. That's been demonstrated already. We know well, the universe Well, you exists. need to prove yeah, That's another thing. But you have to prove gas pressure without a container first. Why you do You have to I? prove that it's possible to have gas pressure. Well, if you're going to claim... That cool. we have no a gas worries. pressure here. Uh, no, right, now, let, let, me, let me clarify. It's not equalizing let, into a vacuum. One, one second, let me clarify. No, just let me finish this. One second. One second. If you're going to claim that we have a gas pressure here that is not equalizing into a massive vacuum it's that not. is surrounding us, then it's you're going to have to show how gas pressure can be contained, can, or gas pressure doesn't, can be shown without a container, and that it won't, then after that you have to show how it doesn't go into a vacuum. Yeah, cool. It won't. So, it won't. Uh, it won't equalize into uh, uh, such a low pressure volume. Apart from gravity, is what causes it, and you have to deny gravity at this well, point, right? Gravity. Well, there is no gravity. No, no, wait, gravity. Let me, let, stop, stop, I debunk stop, gravity. Stop. No, you've never debunked gravity, Brian. Right? Gravity no, is the I answer. Have. No, wait, stop. Gravity is the answer why this happens. Gravity is what's keeping the atmosphere on Earth. There, there is, you know, that is what okay. that is the answer to what's happening, and nobody has debunked let's, gravity because there is a downward about, acceleration. Okay, then. I'm going. Well, the acceleration is a, is the, the downward acceleration you're talking about is a calculation. No, it's an acceleration. And that's based off. 
that's based off no, that's a calculation that's based no, off of the pre assumption of a vacuum. No, it's the assumption of a vacuum. Brian, right, stop talking. That's stop, density stop, you're showing stop there. Talking. That's that's a density issue you're showing. Yeah, there. no. Is this moving? I have a question for you. Uh, no, I'm asking a, a question. Yeah, that's gonna right, fall. Right. right. Is it Can moving? you ask yours? I last mine. Right. Is it moving now? Yes or no? No, it's in your hands. Right. Did it move yep. when it dropped? Yeah, it fell right, when it dropped. Right, that means it went from not moving to moving, which means there's an acceleration. No, yeah, yes. it doesn't have an acceleration. The reason it, it, it fell, it doesn't have structural support. No, it accelerated. No, it doesn't have structural support. No, it accelerated. Brian. Its density doesn't have structural support. No, that, all things no, that are less, all no. things that are more dense than air will go down, including other gases. Oh, cool, all things really? that are less dense um, than air will go up. So this um, lovely aluminium, pretty dense thing, I'm putting it on my wooden desk right now. It doesn't appear to be going through it. No, because the wood oh, is, is dense wow. enough to give a structure of support. But it's less dense. The wood it. will give a structure of support. The wood right. is dense enough Brian. to give that structure of support. Right. You're missing the main point, which is there was an acceleration. It went from not moving to moving, which means it's Because you left it go. It had, doesn't... Yeah, but no, you're missing the point. It doesn't have structural support in the air. The air is not able to support it. Irrelevant. The point it can't is support it went it. from... Ryan, it went from not moving to moving, which means it accelerated. But it has no choice but to move because it doesn't have anything to support it underneath it. Why make, things? What's why all it, things? What's making it go down? What? Why do things go up? All I like, I can't tell you why everything that's more dense than air goes down through it, including other gases. I can. And why? Why Gravity. all things more less dense? One second. And why all things less dense than air go up through it? I because, can't tell you why that happens, but it does happen, and it disproves gravity. gravity. No, it doesn't. Well, well helium, hydrogen, methane, neon, all these things. What, what's the, what stops? What, what's gravity's the equation, not stopping them going up. What's the equation for buoyancy? Buoyancy is a buoyancy is a begging que the question fallacy. No, it's for, not for gravity. No, buoyancy it's not. is not going. Buoyancy you don't know is not what begging correct either. Is. You don't know what begging yeah, the question begging is. Begging the question. I do. do you know, you, buoyancy, you, do you know buoyancy, what buoyancy is? Buoyancy is the only physicality. Buoyancy is not correct either. But more correct is volume, area, design, and displacement. No. That explains volume. None of that, that has a vector. Uh, none of that has a vector, Brian. You are missing Bu the, the main point. Buoyancy uh, has stop, nothing stop, to do stop, with helium stop, or hydrogen. Stop. Neon, it absolutely methane. does. The buoyant, no. the, buoyant, the buoyant force equation actually no. explains that perfectly, and that has G for gravity in it. Uh, so that has gravity in it, of course. Yeah, this because is a that's you you oh, haven't proven X, Craig. We, 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 right, we, X is gravity. You've got right, to prove X. Right. When G G for gravity in that is the downward acceleration, right? That exists on all things, right? You can call that unicorn farts if you want, but that's what that G represents. It represents the fact that when I let this go, it accelerates towards the ground at nine point eight meters per second squared. That's what that G is. It's, that's one second. That is a calculation. If I drop a feather or a drop and I drop a can of beans, what's going to hit the ground first? Uh, depending the on can the can of beans. Yeah, only because it's in an atmosphere. But it doesn't matter. Even in even in a vacuum. No, in a vacuum. If you slow it the down, the more dense heavy, the more dense heavy object will hit the bottom first. No, if it doesn't. You slow it down. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. I've yeah, watched things, it. I mean, even Chemo did it. Even Chemo was showing yeah, it on, and, and, on uh, and all day. And I explained to Chemo when he showed that, that the feather actually had to tumble before it fell. So the fact that it's tumbling means that the top turns under. But you actually, um, if you actually look at the center mass of the feather, which is the important part, and the center mass of the ball, both of them move at the same speed. Right then, take... An empty can of beans and a full can of beans. What's going to hit the ground first? In a vacuum, they do it at the same. same. In a vacuum. Yeah. Um, and How probably, do you know that? Probably in 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 this atmosphere, an empty can of beans and a full can of beans probably hit the ground at the same time as well. Unless you. Get, no, if there's uh, enough some... of a fall, the full can will hit will hit the ground first. Yeah, because air resistance uh, is all to do with surface area and weight, of course. So there's going to be more air resistance. If the can is open, for instance, and air gets inside the can, it's going to create a force in the opposite direction. No, I'm, just, I'm talking about just a closed can, a closed, two closed oh, then, cans. Then they're both going to hit the ground beans, at the same time. No, I, I, no the, the one that with, the, with the beans in it is going to hit the ground first. No, and not. the same in a vacuum.
No, it's not. I have seen no evidence to support the I've claim seen no that everything hit the ground at the same time. Apart same from time all of the evidence it. ever, you mean, that shows that? Well, I have not seen it. I've seen, I've looked, and I can't see any evidence to support that. I mean, you're going to you're going to ignore the the one in the NASA chamber that Brian did, aren't you? I no, it's not that I ignore that. It's that there's a camera cut. So, and that's the problem with that. We don't get to see the whole lot, so, so that you can't. So you, so you, if I don't get to see the whole lot, the, the, the only way that you can hold your position is if you claim someone else is lying. It's not that I'm claiming anyone is lying. It's that that is not done correctly. So I don't hold that up as evidence or non-evidence. Well, understand? Well, every other experiment ever uh, in a vacuum chamber shows that things accelerate at the same speed. Everything the has the acceleration I have, on it. I have not my seen. I, I, Brian, Brian, and th like, there's other I've things seen, about um, gravity that cannot many... be. Wait, stop one sec. There's Hang other, on. there's other things second, about wait. gravity that cannot be explained. Okay, the fact that there is a different gravitational acceleration on. depending on where you are on the world. Why would that happen? We we'll get to that in a second. We we'll get to that in a no, second. No, no, that's we'll what I want to go with right now. Okay, just I just want to ask you the question I wanted to ask you a while back. This is only a yes or no on this one. Right, I'm going to say something to you, right? And you give me a yes or no whether you agree or disagree with it. <clears throat> An object's weight is defined by its inherent density within its volume. Is that correct or incorrect? Uh, well, density is mass over volume, so kind of. You have to take mass into account, right? Well, what's mass? Then it comes back, comes back to what is mass. There's mass no is Where, the where do we something. define mass? Well, not really. Because one the kilogram of, of is something that... is one kilogram of something. That is the yeah. But the problem with mass. mass is that one kilogram of something is not, it's not, it's not the, like one kilogram. Right, you weigh one kilogram. It weighs one kilogram. Mm -hmm. Right, but in your heliocentric belief, on the moon, that one kilogram doesn't weigh that anymore. Yet it's of the same as you say, mass. Yeah, because weight is mass times That's acceleration taken... of gravity. Yeah, but this is this is more begging the question of gravity. No, not. No, there is know. no evidence to support that. There is. There is an acceleration downwards, and that's what we're talking about. You can call it what it what what you want, but there is a downward acceleration that is measurable. This the downward acceleration of nine point eight meters per second squared is a calculation based on the pre assumption of the, of also it being things also being in a vacuum. We don't live in you a vacuum. You can say you can say what you like, Brian. There is a downward acceleration that you can measure. It's not just a calculation. You can measure the acceleration. Well, I have never seen anyone been able to measure this downward acceleration. As cool. uh, things will I, fall I, I, at... I can do it for you now, right? If I drop this over a meter and see how long it takes, I've just measured the acceleration. But you haven't measured it. You've calculated it. I've it's measured it. But that's not a measurement and calculation are the same. Brian. To calculate I, and to measure, Brian, uh, Brian, to measure Brian, something you Brian, have to actually no, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not use. I'm not, I'm not letting you sidetrack with nonsense, flirt like talking points. Can I? Hang on, no. no, We've no, been no, doing no okay wait, up wait, here. wait, wait, wait. Can I measure a 20 centimeter thing with a 10 centimeter rule? A 20 centimeter, not with a 10 If you have a 10 centimeter ruler, you can't me measure, measure it in one go. You'd have to. Put one on top of the other, and and that's not. You have to measure twice with a ten centimeter ruler. And if you have a ten centimeter ruler, you can't measure a twenty centimeter thing. So, are you saying uh, that I can't use that? One, in one go, you'd have to measure it and then yep, measure it again. I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about one go. I'm just talking about doing a measurement. Can I or can I not measure something that is twenty centimeters long with a ten centimeter rule? Can I do it? Yes or no? Can I determine? If you have a ten centimeter rule. If you if you've got a ten centimeter a physical ten centimeter ruler, you can uh, to in one go, just in one go to measure a twenty centimeter. Well, how are you going to measure it if you just got one go? I didn't say you're just, going to have to. I didn't, Brian, I didn't well, say in just one go, right? Can I? Right, this is a yes or no question, right? Can I determine the length of something that is twenty centimeters long using a ten centimeter rule? Can you do it? Is it possible to do that? Yeah, yeah but you can't do it. Therefore, I not, have measured it's, it's that 20 enough. centimeters with that 10 centimeter rule. Yeah, but you've had to do it in two separate goals. Doesn't matter. Measure how, it's what, still what a measurement. Is. Yeah, but it's yeah, but it's done with a physical thing, a physical thing that has that has standard units on it. But have I measured That's it? That's not yes a calculation. No. 
measure. I use standard. So I, I, are you saying I didn't measure that thing? You can, yeah, if you use a physical rule, with, ruler with, with standard units on it, yes, you measure it. Right, even, but if though, you even, don't... Though, right, even though I have to measure 10 centimetres, then measure 10 centimetres, then do a calculation to put it together, have I still measured it, yes or no? Have you still measured it? If yeah. you have to add the two together, yeah. after you've used the standard rule, yeah. you've still measured it. Yeah. Right, after cool. you have to do so... the calculation after the measurement. Yep, so I've still measured calculation it. comes after the measurement, but you're yep. bringing the calculation first and I, I, leaving no, the no, measurement no, out I'm, of it. No, I'm saying that I have measured something that is 20 centimetres long, and I did that measurement using something that was 10 centimetres long. No problem. Calculations are still part of measurements. Right, I'm going to read out here. You, right. you measure time. Telling? You can measure acceleration by measuring the change in speed measure? over distance. Time, time, is no, time is no physicality, though, Craig. Uh, I can easily measure time. I can wait five minutes, and I've just measured five minutes of time. Well, no, you, you've calculated time, five minutes. No, I've, there's I've no. Made... You can't measure something that doesn't have physicality. You can't measure it. You I can't can put measure... any. You can't put a tape measure to time. You can't do I that. can. I can measure. You calculate how long... it with, with a. Brian, Brian, I can absolutely measure how long five minutes takes to pass. Yeah, with a, with a, you don't measure. You calculate it with a watch. It's calculate, calculate. It's you, still a you can't measure. You can't. Well, I'm going to read out the definition of measure. Hang on. Time. It's, it's I'll semantics, read out the definition semant, of measure. Semantics and, me and, and stuff mean nothing. This is how flat earthers try well, to argue. Well, they do. Words have meanings, Craig. Yeah, but you don't apply them well, correctly. I'll read out. Like... I'll read out measure here. One second. Leave, I'm going to read out the definition of measure. The first one from Google and the, and the first definition of calculate. We can't measure time, but guys. Ascertain the size, amount, or degree of something by using an instrument or device marked in standard units. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right? To calculate, right? Seconds the term of the amount. Uh, uh, no, not the second. No, seconds, sec seconds are units of time, which is yeah, not a physical thing. They're standard the calculation units of time. Point. Calculation of time. Brian, are you really saying you can't measure time? What, one second. Calculate. Right. Determine the amount or number of something mathematically. Similar words. Compute, work out, reckon, figure, enumerate, cool. determine. Cool. Right. Similar words for measure. Uh, uh, com where are we? Sorry. Uh, no, they have calculate in and compute and est uh, estimate and count for measure as well. But the calculate comes after measure. That's why measure is not part of the, ter the definition of calculate. Right. And that's cool. just the first one. I can calculations are still parts of measurements. If they have if, to come after a measurement, no, it's part of measurements, Brian. But you know what the problem is in the world to uh, actually the me is, is to measure some things, you have to do calculations. To measure certain things, you have to do calculations. To measure how many revolutions of a car. But I just uh, read uh, out there what you have to, to do with the definition of measure. Yeah, and calculations can be absolutely part of that, right? Like I, yeah, but like, you can't no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Like I said to you, like I said to you, I can measure something that is twenty centimeters with a ten centimeter rule. Yes, I've had to do a calculation, but I've still yeah. measured that thing. That I, yes, I didn't. But I, I didn't. With a physical I, measure. I didn't have something physically twenty centimeters long. I had to do a calculation to see how many of those rules fitted on that thing. I still fucking measured it. Yeah, but you had to use a physical measure first. Yeah, that's the point. I can the use point other making. physical things. Cal yeah, but if I, but the problem with calculations is, with a measure, when you have to use a physical thing with standard units on it, then you have to Many stick times. to that. It is what it is. But when you're talking about calculating, you can calculate something right or wrong. And if you don't have physical measurements to support that, then you don't know if it's correct or incorrect. Or yeah, that. but if you have physical measurements and then you add a bunch of physical measurements together, then that's still a measurement. Well, if you have, if you have to, if My you God. measure first and you, if you measure first and then you calculate after measure, then you, that's acceptable. But if you're just calculating without measurement, which is what the 9.8 meters per second square is. No, it's not. You're is, measuring that. You're not. You're calculating yes, you it. No, you're not. You're measuring it. And it's also done in the pre-assumption of a vacuum. No, on That's Earth. That's also done in the pre-assumption of on a vacuum. Earth. No, no, on Earth, most things fall with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, regardless of atmospheric conditions. 
Uh, How do you prove that? How do you prove everything? Everything oh, ever. Sorry, if I drop a leaf and I drop a rock. If you drop a what, sorry? If I drop a leaf and I drop a rock. Yeah. If I drop a leaf and a rock from 30 feet up, or 50 feet up, if I drop a leaf, drop a leaf and a rock at the same time, what's going to hit the ground first? Um, in the atmosphere, the rock, because there's air resistance. Yeah. So that's, this is the reality. But we live it in reality. still has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second acting on it. However, you can calculate... It has more density. No, no, wait. It doesn't have more density than a rock. What the fuck? Well, but, well, it does. But, it has but, more density than the, 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 the thing is, The thing is, you can calculate the forces acting in the opposite direction to gravity. And it's about the summation of forces. And if you calculate the amount of forces because of air resistance and surface area, and take that away from the acceleration due to gravity, you get the actual amount of um, acceleration that's there. But you still have to use that acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared to do that calculation. And we have measured... Yeah, but that's all acceleration. calculation. So, wait, are you, are you saying you cannot measure acceleration? You can, well, you can't. You have to calculate it. So, wait, I just want you to say... Acceleration is not a Brian, physical Brian, thing. I, I want you to say that again. Are you saying you cannot measure acceleration? You have to calculate acceleration. No, no, no. no I, I would like you to say the words. Can you please say you can't measure acceleration? You can't measure acceleration. Thank you. That's going to be a lovely clip. Brian, is acceleration a physical thing? thing? Yes, absolutely. Is it? Well, show me, show me, show me a physical, show me acceleration. Show yeah. me where I can go to the shop and buy. Can I, can I buy acceleration in the shop? Mm, that's a fucking stupid thing to no. say, Brian. No, it's not a stupid thing to say. It's proving yes, it my is. point. It's no, not it's really something I can not. buy. It's not. It's not something tangible. Yes, it is. I can well, measure it's the not acceleration. Tangible. Acceleration is a calculation in itself. No, it's an actual thing. Acceleration is all. If you accelerate in your car, the car is a calculation. Brian, Brian you're still ignoring the acceleration. The acceleration still exists. What acceleration am I ignoring? Which acceleration am I ignoring? You're ignoring that. the density. No, I'm yeah, not. that's density, Craig. It's, it's more it accelerated, density. Accelerated though. The air doesn't have Brian, structural no, stop, support. Stop! For it. Stop! 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 Whether the, air has, whether the air has structural support or not, the lighter is still accelerating. But you're missing the point. No, I'm not. It's going to fall if it doesn't no, have it's, it's structural not, right, support. Point, it's not falling. It's accelerating. You can't prove, you can't prove that's accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. I absolutely can And can't. that everything will accelerate at that. How do you prove that? Wait, did, did you just say I could not prove that this is accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared? Yes. Because I could absolutely do that. I could measure the amount of time. Think? Well, I could measure the amount of time that it takes to go from there to there based on its velocity and its change in speed over time and easily calculate that this fell with 9.8 meters per second squared. That's a fucking basic Incorrect. calculation. Incorrect. You just said you could measure. You can't measure something that doesn't have physicality. Yes, you can. You can't measure time. Yes, you can. My time has no physicality. You can There's no time. physicality to time. You can measure time. You can count time. You can't measure it. My God, this is fucking ridiculous. Are you honestly saying that I cannot calculate and measure a 9.8 meters per second acceleration from this falling? Brian, you can't you, measure you know, it. You, know you what? can calculate you know, you know what? I'm going to do a video specifically for you on acceleration because you haven't... I don't even think yes. you know... Right. Actually, just I, I need to know that we're talking on the same terms. Define acceleration. Acceleration is yeah. well, well. Acceleration is the is the push that something will have to move it faster. No, that's not that's, what acceleration is. Can you actually? But if I put like, on the put my foot on the acceleration, the accelerator of the car, right? If I push on the me. accelerator pedal, this is the problem. The right? this, is, this is the problem, right? You have to argue physics on, break, you don't on. have the first. If clue. I put on, if I put my foot on the accelerator pe pedal, right? Does it not cause, right? Does it not cause the car to go faster? Yes. To accelerate. Now define Why? what acceleration is. Why? Because there's been a force applied. To accelerate. Is there a force applied? Is that what you're yes. asking? Yes. No, no, no. I'm still asking. Well, you with a car, with a car, it, it means that there's more boring going on of fuel. Yeah, there's been a force applied by the An engine. But it, let's get back to my question. Yeah. Let's get back to my to my question. Can you yeah, but please? Your question. Qu is my my question, the question is. No, it's not. I'm asking you to define about gravity. Being no, a force. I'm, no, or I'm not. Right, Brian, stop talking. Pushing the thing down a bit. Stop talking and listen for one sec, right? It's a very simple thing I'm asking you to do. Can you please define mm -hmm. acceleration? Define it, acceleration. Yes. Uh, 
to to to, acce to accelerate is to make move faster, cause something to move faster. When something accelerates, it, it, you're, it's moving faster. Brian, this is simple, mate. Honestly, what? acceleration. What, what is it? Acceler so you tell me. You tell me. You you define it for me, then, Craig. Acceleration is the change in velocity over distance. So that's not something moving faster. I asked you to define what velocity was. Just you saying it moves faster. Was. You just you just said it moves faster. Acceleration. Something, yeah, there's, it's something there's literally Something being made to move faster. That's what. That's acceleration. I gave a layman's term. What's wrong with that? A layman's term. There's nothing wrong with that. And, and again, it's not just it moving faster. Acceleration is the difference between one speed and another. It's not just I pushed mm -hmm. it, it went faster. Acceleration yeah, is... Yeah, but it's... Uh, wait, wait, no. Acceleration is a specific thing. Acceleration is to do with the change in velocity. Yeah, okay, but it's moving faster, yeah? <laughs> I'm not wrong about that. You it's really moving are. faster. Oh, my God. To accelerate is you to don't... move faster, Craig, is not. No, it's not. If I if I accel if I'm walking and I accelerate, do I end up moving faster? You end up if moving I'm faster, but accelerating yeah, ex isn't moving faster. If I accelerate while I'm Brian, walking, I walk faster. Brian, you, do you know? Well, do, do you know you can have negative acceleration? That, I can decelerate. Yeah, that's also called acceleration, though. That's negative. Yeah, but that's that's slowing down. That's not like accelerating is to accelerate in your car is to speed up. To decelerate no, no, but, but, is to slow down. But to the term acceleration literally just means it, it, it literally does um, change in velocity. Acceleration is a change in velocity over time. Oh, sorry, I said distance before I meant time. So, yeah. So the, the fact that the important thing about acceleration is the fact that you're changing. It's the change in, in, in speed, right? You can go from walking at 10 miles an hour to all of a sudden walking at 20 miles an hour, right? You have accelerated to do that, but the acceleration is the change in velocity between the 10 and the 20 over the amount of time that that took to happen. Yeah, but the acceler to accelerate is to move faster. No, it's not. And to it's decelerate is to move slower. Fancy. So if I accelerate, right. do I move faster? No, if not, I accelerate, not always, I no. move faster? No, not always, because acceleration well, is... When, when, I not, when, when, do I not, when will I not be moving faster? When you put your foot on if the I brake. Accelerate. If you put your foot on a brake... Yeah, but that's deceleration. Car, no, that's but still... But that's deceleration. That's yeah. not acceleration. It's still acceleration. Deceleration is neg it's negative. Deceleration. No, no. Yeah, yeah but stop, it's, stop, stop. It's, that's Brian, why it's called... Brian, 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 stop. Brian, stop. It's called negative acceleration, all right? Deceleration is still acceleration. It's a change in velocity, be it positive or negative. An acceleration is a change in velocity over an amount of time. So if you go from 15 miles an hour to 30 miles an hour over a five-minute period, you have accelerated during that five-minute period. Okay, one second. I'm just going to get the definition of accelerate and decelerate, okay? Please do. Also, look up the term negative acceleration. So, um, this is just from the physicsclassroom.com. Uh, when an object is slowing down, the acceleration is in the opposite direction as the velocity. Thus, th thus this object has negative acceleration. Um, so, yes, it is also referred to as deceleration. But it's, you know, it's still an acceleration because acceleration is just a change in velocity over time. It's just a, neg a deceleration is a negative acceleration. Yes, so... Yeah, that's what it says here. So these, yeah, it's, it's saying it like, uh, I, I bet yeah, you're finding something that says something same. like deceleration is acceleration in the opposite direction, right? No, I just read the first thing. It's just the deceleration is uh, like the, the reduction in speed of rate. That's what that's what they call it, deceleration. And acceleration is is uh, in, in mechanics, acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity of an object with respect uh, to time. And there's more there. Uh, yeah. So deceleration <laughs> always refers to the acceleration in the direction opposite to the yeah. direction of velocity, right? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you're 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 Negative accelerating acceleration. means something will move faster. No, no, it doesn't. To accelerate that, that's, something, that's, Brian. That's that's plainly wrong. Acceleration does not always mean to go faster. 
negative acceleration well, is when does thing. it mean not to go faster when, when you does are it mean not when you are faster? decelerating because that's still a change in velocity yeah but that's deceleration there are two separate words though Craig yeah, for but, a good reason but deceleration is a negative acceleration that's what I'm trying to explain to you acceleration doesn't just mean to go faster acceleration literally just means the change in velocity over time be it negative or positive okay so what you're saying yeah okay so wait deceleration oh God. is a change in velocity over time in the yes. opposite way that's what you're saying right so yeah, to accelerate is, negative, yeah. is to to accelerate so but, but but if i accelerate if i tell you i'm accelerating will i be saying i'm going faster or say i'm going slower it depends if you put your foot on the gas you're going to be speeding up right yeah. so you you've accelerated and if you, i want you, to decelerate and if you want to decelerate, it the... which is also known as a negative acceleration, you put your foot on the brake, yeah. right? Now, this goes, back to Newton, brake. To, this goes back to Newton's law of motions, right? Because um, an object in motion is going to stay in motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force, right? So you're in a car, you're going forward, right? You need an unbalanced force in the opposite direction, which is applied by the brakes, to make your acceleration negative to reduce your velocity over time, right? So you've accelerated in the negative. So it, it just, it's just a simple mathematical term. Acceleration, yeah, in colloquial usage, generally means to speed up. But in mathematics, it can literally mean to um, just the change in velocity over time. And even in, uh, you can even actually have velocity without, you know, changing your speed, because if you move in a, in a circle, you're technically always accelerating, but that's a different calculation altogether but um if an hour yeah the acce acceleration basically it just means a change in velocity over time right but the important okay. point about well, an acceleration it, right it all it, let, let's bring it back on track because the reason i was talking about yeah. acceleration right um, you have to go very quiet there for some reason yeah uh, maybe it's your microphone or something just oh, to say it sorry you. uh it's not really quiet but you have to go on quieter yeah. that's what you're right. okay sorry um i'm just my kid came through and just a uh, barrier so i'm trying not uh -huh. to be too loud but right, so the, the point is, right, that in a car, if you want to accelerate or decelerate, right, you need to apply a force, okay? You need to either put your foot on the accelerator to go faster or put your foot on the brake to go slower. And you either increase your velocity over time or decrease your velocity over time. But the important point is that you needed to apply a force for that to happen. And it's the same with if at this point I want this to accelerate, there needs to be a force applied to it. And for it to go from not moving to moving means that regardless of the density and stuff, that there has been an acceleration applied. There is a force of some oh, kind yeah. because it's gone from not moving to moving, which means there is a change in velocity over time. Yeah, but that's explained by density. Relative density equilibrium explains that. Is that it doesn't have structure as a board. So because it doesn't have structural support, it's going to fall. Yeah, There's yeah, nothing no, underneath okay, it. Right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing about what the, because the reason why it is falling at this point, right? I'm not arguing about the reason why it is going from here to here. The, the thing I'm trying to point out is that from it going from a point of not moving to moving means that it has accelerated. The, the, the argument of why that's happening right now is irrelevant, right? The fact that we both need to agree on is that for it to go from here to here, it has to have accelerated, right? Well, it definitely had to move. Well, no, it had to accelerate because there was a change Which in velocity. Go. Yeah. Did it speed up as it fell? Yes. It went from not moving. It's it, you know, yeah, it but that's you're from not from not moving to moving. That's speeding up. Yes, but you're holding it, and when you leave it go, it falls. Yeah, but it accelerates because yes. it it goes from not moving to moving. That there's a change well, in velocity. And, um, uh, observer, and, and, and what, what you would find, actually, um, uh, this is a basic experiment that you, you do in high school, right, um, where you get um, like a, a paper ticker on the edge of a desk, right? And on the paper ticker, you've got a pencil that hits it every second. And you attach a ball bearing to the end of that paper ticker and you let it fall off the edge of the desk, right? And then what you find is that as the ball goes towards the ground, the gaps between the pencil mark on the paper ticker get further apart, meaning that the the ball, as it's gone from falling uh, from not moving to going down to the floor, it's increased in velocity for that entire time. 
meaning that it has to, it's accelerated. That it's gained, you're saying it's gained momentum as it falls. Yeah, the, so, uh, uh, you know, the, the first second that it went off the desk, it was traveling a lot slower than by the time it hit the floor. And you could see that by the fact that the marks on the paper ticker got further apart. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand what you mean. But the problem with this is that you're inferring that there is a force or let's say an effect of gravity, right? Causing well, this. At, at, at the moment, I'm not inferring anything. The only Sorry. thing I'm doing is I'm trying to look at empirical observations, right? And the empirical observations tell us that there's an acceleration acting on everything because things accelerate as they go towards the ground. They increase in velocity until they either hit the ground or reach a terminal velocity, depending on surface area and air resistance. But there, we have to agree, Brian, you have to agree with me that as soon as I let this go, it accelerates, right? It goes from not moving to moving a little bit to moving faster, right? Well, I can't say from just looking at it that it does speed up that much, as you're saying. But if I drop something from a high place, due to the momentum, it is likely to speed up as it falls. I, I agree with that. Yeah, and that's an acceleration, but, right? Yeah, but my point is with that is that that's density causing that. Yeah, but what's causing it, it or not? Is, is it, right, at, this, at this point, what's causing it or not is irrelevant. We need to agree that there is an acceleration. Right. Well, I can't prove that that acceleration happens. I could but see how it could happen. You, you can, but because it can't it's, it's it gone from. It's I gone. Can't say, yeah, that happens. For it, them. it doesn't instantly just go from not moving to really fast. Right. It goes from not moving to increasing in speed, right. getting faster. Right. It not moving well, to moving. That is an acceleration. You have to agree with me here. Uh, this is a simple, yeah, simple thing. Problem, yeah, but the problem, right, the problem is, is the 9.8 meters per second squared is a calculation that also takes into account a vacuum, that is done in a vacuum. Whereas well, in the real world, we don't have everything, but, right, let's just say things are accelerate. Let's say you drop that lighter from 50 foot up. That mm -hmm. will accelerate more than a leaf. Yeah, because of air resistance, right? Yeah, but, 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 but it, it will but accelerate it, if it won't if, accelerate, if, so if the you are not accelerating at the same rate. Right, but what you the right? I, I explained this before. Okay, the thing with the leaf is there is forces acting in the other direction, and it's about summation of forces. Okay, there is um, a greater force acting in the opposite direction because the mass of the leaf and the force of it acting down, meaning that it will accelerate less in the atmosphere. If the atmosphere wasn't there, then that wouldn't be a problem. But if you drop things of you know, that, that tend to fall through the atmosphere, they will both fall at the same acceleration, you know? Well, I would say with a leaf, a leaf, obviously, because of its shape, yeah, it's it, obviously it going has to air resistance. be more likely to float through the air as opposed to fall hard, let's just say. Yeah. Because of its shape, it's going to take up, but it's not a very dense crumple thing, that leaf up. So it, doesn't have a whole, it doesn't have a whole lot of weight. Sorry, what were you going to say? Crumple that leaf up. And what happens? Yeah, it'll, it'll fall. If I crumple up the leaf, it'll fall different because it doesn't Why? have the design. Why? I, because because it doesn't have the volume in area. Exactly. There, to, there we uh, go. Which means yeah. that there is less. There that means there is less area for air resistance. Meaning there is less of a force right. acting in the opposite direction. Right. But even if you crumple up that leaf and you drop that along with something else of the same size, but that is more dense. The thing that is more dense will like you crumple up the leaf into the into the into the same size as a ball bearing and you drop that crumpled up leaf in the ball bearing the ball bearing is going to fall with more momentum um i think in most circumstances a crumpled up leaf and a ball bearing would probably fall pardon me at relatively the same speed there's still going to be some effects from air resistance because of the total volume and stuff and the crumpled up leaf is still going to have bits that the air can get into but um you know, it's all to do with forces and the summation of forces, right? And whether you want to agree with it or not, in a vacuum, things fall with the same acceleration. But it gets away from the point that all this is around, Brian, is that there is an acceleration, right? And if there is an acceleration, there has to be a force. 
yeah, but uh, no, hang on. The acceleration you're speaking about, the the problem, like the 9.8 meters per second square, our problem on my side of the fo of the fence, let's just say, in my faction of flat earth, our problem is that that is a is that is is said to be something that's real, but yet it's a calculation that also pre-assumes being done in a in a vacuum. So something things accelerating as they fall, I would say that it makes sense um, that something of a weight, something that has density and has weight, even a ball bearing, will accelerate more than a crumpled up uh, right. leaf because okay, right. it has more density but, or right, momentum. So take um, a ball bearing, right, and then yeah. take another ball bearing that's 10 times the size. Yeah. Which one of those is going to hit the ground first? Well, see, there you go. It depends because the bigger ball bearing is going to have more air resistance because yeah. it's bigger. But, you know, the thing, but so it's ball bearings are, are, are heavy enough in general. The air resistance isn't really a problem. So let, let's well, say, let's say we're, we're technically removing air resistance from the equation here, right? And well, we won't do that. So let's, not remove, let's not remove air resistance. Let's keep that there because that way we're sticking in reality. Because if we start going into the realms of vacuum, yeah, we're talking about stuff the, inside the, the chamber. The, the thing is, with, with air resistance, you have to do other calculations alongside the 9.8 meters per second squared, right? But even in an atmosphere, a ball bearing and a ball bearing 10 times its size are likely going to fall and hit the ground at exactly the same time. And the 9.8 meters per second squared, that basic school experiment I was talking about with the paper ticker and the pencil falling off the edge, right? That, the, the results you get from that are 9.8 meters per second squared. Right. If you didn't, well, if, you, if, you, if you didn't get my eight meters per second squared, you'd done the experiment wrong. If I, uh, I can't guarantee. I can, sorry, I can't agree that the two ball bearings of two different sizes are going to hit the ground at the same time because I don't know. Um, to me, it would seem the bigger one will hit the ground first. No, that's uh, but if the, the, the lack of size, so it, 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 it gets no. away from the main. We keep getting kind of a little bit sidetracked from the main point that there is an acceleration. Whenever something yeah, is, is going down, it goes from not moving to moving. That means there's an acceleration, and that has okay. implications. Let's say there is an acceleration, then what's causing it? Right. Well, that's where we get to, okay? The reason that we say the acceleration is there is because the curvature of space-time is making things fall towards the larger mass. That's what we call gravity. Yeah. Okay, and so, I would assert that it's to do with density and a lack of structural support. However, density is not a force, so that can't be the case. But, and but it the doesn't. Acceleration... It, uh, wait, Brian, it, it comes with other problems like why down? But why up? Why do so all the things that are less dense than air go up? Because the, the, that that matches our model. The boy, the boy in the equation explains that perfectly, right? But, but, but at the moment but, yeah, we're but, talking yeah, about. Yeah, at, the, at the moment, the we're talking is, about the majority of things, right, that are yeah. denser than air. Why do they go down? Why down? The things what? that are yeah, why, why do the things go that are denser than air, than air go down, and yeah. the things less dense than air go up? That is something I don't know. I don't know why that happens. I just know that it does. Well, the answer is gravity. Well, no, because gravity is not proven. It's not. It's not a proven thing. Gravity There's has no... been demonstrated to be fact many, many times. All right. Is there a viable scientific hypothesis for gravity? Yes. Put forward by anybody. Who yeah. put forward a viable scientific hypothesis? Many of them. Who I mean, did it? The, right. Here's, right. Here's the thing about gravity, right? We don't know exactly what causes it, okay? We know um, what is causing yeah. the acceleration, right? We know that there's a curvature in space-time that is making things fall towards the larger mass, right? We don't know exactly why masses warp space-time. We don't know the exact reason that happens. And that's, you know, the subject of a lot of investigation at the moment, okay? But yeah, the, the fact that space-time the, the fact that space -time gets warped and stretched by mass is something that's been scientifically and experimentally demonstrated many, many, many times. Where was, where was space-time ever shown to be real, true experimentation? Okay, have you ever Googled have, have you ever Googled scientific experiments for relativity? Uh, no, I haven't. 
Right, that's one of the issues. You haven't ever looked for it, have you? Because there's many. Um, let me get well, my yeah, favourite one. For a, for a scientific, for, for a science experiment, right, you need to first have a naturally observed phenomenon. What is the naturally observed phenomenon for space-time? Right. So, the ex um, let me... Uh, do, 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 bear with me, I'm just getting the thing up. Uh, <clears throat> there's the one... I'm trying to find the paper that I refer to. I've deleted a bunch of my notes. Oh, where it is. Right, anyway, so um, the, the observed phenomenon is that the position of stars appear to change when they go near the moon, right? That, that was something that people, people noticed, right? That as the moon moves through the sky, the, the apparent position of the stars that, that is going past slightly shifted. And they also noticed that when planets... Um, you know, move through where, where they could see it, that as the, the planets went past the stars, that the, the, the position of the stars would slightly shift, right? So the, the hypothesis was that the, the mass from the planets was warping space-time, causing the light to bend. Yeah, but is that not just light refraction? No, no. Uh, that, it, there, there's nothing to Why do not? with, with the atmosphere in particular. It's to do with the fact that as these bodies got near the the stars in the sky, the the the, the literal position of the stars appeared to change. There's no atmosphere on the moon, so you know the moon going near the stars isn't yeah. going to cause any kind of atmospheric refraction. But in, in what you're telling me there, you have to do a lot of pre-assumptions. No, there's a lot no. of pre-assumptions that the moon is what is a, a rock. 240 something thousand miles away and that the sun is a particular thing that's 93 million miles away. Yeah, that's and all been demonstrated already. Are, are the See, these, these are a lot of pre-assumptions. No, no, no. It's no never... assum Brian, Brian, it's never assumptions. These are all things that have been demonstrated to be fact. Just No, just you saying it's an assumption is a fallacy that you're using. Right? There is no assumptions made. Everything I say is but backed up. Is. No, I haven't no, made any assumptions. I've made zero. I, I'd never make assumptions. I go okay. with scientific right. fact. This is why they're delta X. Because X has to be gas pressure without a container. Something that it? has never been. Sorry? Why does it? Why? Because, that, because we're told that we live in a pressurized, right. a, a pressurized environment <clears throat> that, is next to, that, is, that is basically becomes a vacuum. So, right, if, no. I can, if I can demonstrate to you that there is... Wait, wait, Brian, one second. If I, if I can demonstrate to you that there is definitely a vacuum above us, is that enough? How could you demonstrate that? I've, no one else has been able to demonstrate it. Fred's rhetoric has done it many times. How did he demonstrate it? Well, by filming rocket launches with the sun illuminating the gases. Do you know what For happens? Sure, that doesn't, that doesn't, that's not proving that we have a vacuum. Then uh, explain, the, the, explain, uh, explain why, as the rocket goes up, the gases expelling out the back get larger and larger. Why? I, I don't know why that happens, but that doesn't prove it's because it's a there's a... No, it, it, absolutely. It, wait, 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 wait. No, does, does gas... Do, Brian, Brian, does gas disperse in a vacuum? G gas, yes, it does. And right, gas okay. Gas equalise it. And, volume. and, when, and when you watch the rocket launches from Reds, you see the, the rockets going up, and as it gets higher and higher, the exhaust coming out the back gets larger and larger because the gases are dispersed more and more as the pressure decreases more and more. That is an, a, 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 an empirical a, observation of a, the fact that there is a vacuum above us. Then that doesn't make it a vacuum. That then, made, no, that's another probably assumption. That does no, not, no, not prove a vacuum. Then, that's showing a pressure difference. There's a yeah. difference. Uh, uh, the fact that we're talking about is becomes what we are told is 10 to the minus 17 door. Which what do you be, think that's next to? What, what's that 10 to the minus 17 door? Yeah, what's, what's that what's next to? Well, it's very close. It's supposed to be very close to the globe earth. No. Yeah, but that 10 to the negative 17 door pressure, what pressure is that supposed to be next to? Uh, I don't understand your question. So, you well, say, would you define your question? So, 
what what pressure is yeah, I, you're, yeah, but you're saying, yeah I, I, I'm sorry I get you now what you're saying is that that's supposed to be ten to next to 10 to the minus 16 tour yeah and that's supposed to be next to 10 to the minus 15 tour uh -huh. but that is back to the pressure gradient you yeah. how do you have gas pressure originally you can't have a gas pressure gradient without gas pressure so okay. how do you have gas pressure without container gravity that's that's all delta x no gravity it's been but demonstrated we know there's delta x too. Well, no, 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 that's no, not no, 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 no. When I'm talking about gravity, I simply mean the acceleration that is demonstrable. That acceleration that means that the atmosphere true. will stick to Earth. It's as simple as that. But I can, argue, I can argue density for that. Just no, you can't. Because density yeah, doesn't explain. It, no, no. Density doesn't explain acceleration or vector. You admitted yourself. Well, you, no, no, no. Wait, yeah. stop, stop, stop. You, Brian, Brian, you, Brian, you admitted yourself. You do not have a reason why it goes down. So you cannot use density as an explanation because it is not a complete explanation, right? I can only give, yeah, but it is an explanation because no, it's I can show that everything that is more dense than air will go down through it. Why? And everything that is less dense than air will go up through it. Why? Why? I don't know why that happens. I just know that it does. Because there's an acceleration. Well, there's no acceleration on helium, hydrogen, yeah, there neon, is. methane. It's it no, accelerating in the opposite direction. Hydrogen is, hydrogen is the least dense uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, element to go Absolutely. Helium is the second least dense. And do you know why it goes up instead of down? Because it's less dense than no, no, the that, That's a kind of a, a, a half an explanation. Do you know the actual reason? Well, it, it's true, is it not? Well, half, it's, yeah, it's half an explanation, right? So you've got a, a, a helium balloon that is going up, right? The reason it's going up is because the more dense air is accelerating downwards past it, creating a force in the opposite direction. That's what we call the buoyant force. Boy, well, the buoyant, uh, sorry, density, right? Things in nature, in our world, all structure themselves with to, uh, sorry, all align themselves uh, to where their density should be. So Why? a stone, is on the ground why though? whereas helium is going to be up in the sky yeah why though why that happens i don't know i, do. I don't know gravity. why that happens I don't know what I'm making. but gravity gravity <laughs> gravity is supposed to be is supposed to be making matter go down not gravity. allowing it to go up no 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 the, the i just gave you the explanation of why it goes oh, you, up oh, you started talking about you started talking about buoyant force yeah right that, that happens because buoyancy of gravity Right, Brian. Right, right, right. Buoyancy yeah, is absolutely. begging the question policy no, of it's gravity. No, it's not. Right. That's okay. It. So, it's Brian, it's stop, it's stop, it's stop, it's stop, 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 stop. So, you're in a car, and you've got a helium balloon with you. You slam your foot mm -hmm. on the brake. Right. You go forward. What happens to that helium balloon? Well, the helium balloon would be trying to stick to the ceiling of the car. So no. I don't know. I never did. No. The helium balloon goes backwards. Right. But if you accelerate in a car and you get thrown backwards into your seat, that helium balloon goes forwards, right? Do you know why? Because... Well, I've never seen that done. I don't know if that happens. I, I, I could bring up a video of it right now if, if you like, but it, just trust me, it does happen, right? And the reason why does that... It, you're asking me why that happens. Yeah. Why when you accelerate in your car that, the, that the you will why, go back but the and the helium balloon will go forward. Right. And when you press on the brake, you go forward and the helium balloon goes back. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Why does that happen? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know why, that ha why right. that's happening. Here's why that happens. If it's, if it's happening, I don't know that it is. I never saw it. I don't know right. if it actually happens. All right. I'll, I'll bring up a video of it if you really need me to, because there's plenty of them, right? But well, here's, here's, I don't, here's the reason why it happens. Point, here's, here's the reason why it happens, Brian, is because when you slam your foot on the brake, you and all the air in the car are being thrown forward, right? Because you and all the air maintains the, inert the inertia. All right, but because that helium balloon is lighter than the air, it means that because the air is thrown forwards, it moves to the back. Right? It's, it's pushed back, is what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it, because it's lighter than yeah. the air, and all the heavier but, air is forced to the front. And because the heavier yeah, but, air is forced to the front, okay. it creates a force in the opposite direction, moving the balloon backwards. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to point out something here. It's a balloon, which means it has a volume. It's helium within a volume. So the air rushing forward is pushing the balloon back, and the air rushing back is pushing the balloon forward. That doesn't mean the helium is doing it. 
Ah, the now, alien wasn't. Uh, it, it, it won't happen uh, with a normal balloon that that doesn't have helium in. Right? It only happens. Yeah, but with a normal balloon will have air, which is which. Uh, a normal balloon that doesn't have helium. Let's just say you just blow it up with, with your, just with your lungs or you blow uh -huh. it up with whatever. That's going to have a more dense gas inside of it. So there's less chance of it happening. With the helium, it's such a le it's so so light that the air is able yeah, to push the balloon yeah, over yeah, the back. Exactly, right? Because the helium is light, it makes the balloon itself less dense than the air it's in, right? Okay? Well, the balloon, the balloon itself is, is, le is, not, is not... Like, what's happening is the balloon itself with helium in it is lighter than the balloon with, with normal air in it. Yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. it would happen with helium, not with a normal air balloon. Exactly. So we're, get, it's, Brian, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. But what makes the balloon light? The helium. What makes the helium light? The density. The the atomic number and stuff, right? But well, um, as, I, as I said earlier, an object right, weighs uh, is the density. density de de right. The thing is, we're we're getting That's to we're getting from. we're getting to density, right? And density is an important point, right? Because density is rho, right? Um, and density is an important part of the buoyant force equation. Because you have to take density into account because it's all to do with the amount that it can displace and stuff to, to actually you know, be able to calculate the forces that are created. So a, that's the density of something is important to the buoyant force equation, but it's only one of the factors and can't explain the most important thing about all of this, which is a vector, right? All of this happens, right? The organizing of the density the, the helium balloon going up, things going down um, normally, all of that happens because there is a vector, a downward acceleration acting on everything. Everything would happen. Downward acceleration acting on everything. Helium yeah. and hydrogen, neon, methane wouldn't be going up. I just explained that to you, Brian, fuck's sake. No, you didn't. You didn't. What you're, what, what you're after doing, uh, let's see, what you're, see, the problem is, is that <laughs> would your explanation for, for the helium and hydrogen going up that contradicts why things go down. No, it doesn't. It does. It contradicts your argument against... It actually, what you're actually doing is you're actually helping out the relative density argument. No, no, I'm not. Because things really... are going down because they're... Relative they're actually helping out the relative density. Yeah. Relative density can because... never explain the vector, right? And... Uh, all right, let, 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 let me try this. Let me try this once. Let me, let me try this once more. Let me, no, all right, let, let me try this once more, right? The reason a helium balloon goes up is because the more dense air is pulled down around it. You could not have but that helium. No, wait, wait, let me, let me finish. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. You could not have the helium balloon with an upward force if there was not a downward acceleration acting on the air around it. Okay. What air is being pulled down? All the air around the balloon. What air? It's not going uh, like the, the, the helium is rising through anything that's more dense than it till it because, gets to a point. Yeah, because below the, air, because the more dense air is pulled down because it has more mass. And because how it's do you pulled, pull down the gas? Gravity, Brian. Gravity. Fuck's sake. How do you pull? But you can't. Yes, gases you can. are gases, Chris. Gases can't are still pull affected down by gravity. But no, you're pre-assuming gravity. You're, if no, this I'm is not. Delta X, you no, have no, 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 no. Gravity. Brian, I'm never that assuming gravity in, when I say, not, you Brian, what, like, let's get one thing straight. I'm not assuming anything. When I say gravity, I mean the acceleration we have both agreed is there. No, we've agreed that there's a momentum that can happen. There's acceleration. Right, with density. Uh, right, you're still, you're still denying a there's a fuck. Are you really still denying that there's an acceleration? I'm denying that there's an acceleration because of gravity. That's what I'm denying. It doesn't I'm matter what's there I'm for. That, that, that G, right, that, that G for that? gravity literally what's just means the acceleration. It doesn't matter what's, what's causing it. It's, but it, it, it does cause it because if it's not because if it's something other than what G is, then it's then it's not to do with G. What if no. a dense object, a dense object, right, can gain momentum as it falls because, because it doesn't have structural support. Right, can you give it me doesn't have structural can you, support. Can you give me any math ar you, around what you just... One second. Right, no, 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 Brian, I, right, before you go on with that, I have to ask you, do you have any maths or anything to back up anything that you are saying? Because if what, not... Do I have I, what? I, do, you have, do, you, do you have any maths? Do you have any maths to back up anything that you are saying? I say mathematics. 
maths? You know, I don't have mathematics. I right, mean, okay, well, then I'm applying Hitchens' razor. If you can't provide evidence of what you're saying, then I'm dismissing what you're saying. Relative density what does not to explain what a vector. It, it doesn't explain yes, a vector. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. It doesn't Gravity. explain... It, it doesn't explain density. why things order in the way they do due to density. Sure, we had the thing earlier about why well, we had the thing earlier about about a ball bearing or a leaf. What will fall? What will fall faster and gain more momentum? The ball bearing. If you put that leaf in the, if you put that, you melt that ball bearing down and put it in the shape of a leaf, right? And then drop it at the same speed at the same time right, as we're going, a leaf. We're going around the in circles. Time. And what's going to hit the ground first? The ball bearing that was made into a leaf. Yeah, we're, we're, going, around, we're, we're going around in circles. I've already, Brian, we're going around in circles. I've already explained all that to you. It's all to do with air resistance, right? And even a crunched up leaf not, is going not. to have more yeah. air resistance force in ratio to the ball bearing because of its mass. I mean, you know, yeah, but that just proves the downward acceleration. No, it, it doesn't. It, to, it doesn't because given. it's about the sun. You said earlier... Oh, fuck's sake, you Brian, no, stop, stop, Brian, it. just stop. Do you know what the sum well, of forces... Hang on, wait, I have to be able to talk too. Do you know what the sum of forces means? The sum of forces, I've never heard of it. Oh, for fuck's sake, go and learn some physics, seriously. I have to do with anything. What, what, how does that disprove my argument? Because you have to know the sum of forces to know what's happening. Right, I don't Brian, have to know... Oh, honestly, the, uh, honestly, Okay, Brian. okay, you right, say, at, at, you this say, point, you at this point, at this point, I honestly feel like I, I am teaching... Down. I honestly feel like You're at this point I'm teaching... A, a, no, this, I is a, this is, a, this I is an appeal to an education fallacy no, 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 that I, you're using. No, I'm not using any fallacy. I'm saying I yes, feel like are. I'm teaching you basic physics. You're not teaching me basic anything because I'm, I'm telling to, you something you're not that getting you can't no, I, I, you're trying I, to infer gravity. No, I'm, I'm not, saying that no, there's an acceleration. I'm, 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 I'm not inferring anything. There's an acceleration that cannot be denied. Yeah, and I'm saying the acceleration is because of density. Density no, is causing no, no, the acceleration. No, 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 no. Density because cannot cause. De no, density cannot cause acceleration. It cannot cause a change in velocity over time. Density okay. is not a force, right? Now, I, I, let me yeah. ask you this. Then. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Will you agree or disagree? Do oh, sorry. Do you agree or disagree that an object's weight is defined by its inherent density within its volume? Is that a correct statement? It's mass. It's density is its mass over volume. It's in th no, but st stick to the words I'm using. No, I'm right. I'm, I'm going to stick to the actual definition of, of what density is. Right. Right. An object's weight is defined by its inherent density within its volume. No, it's is that weight. correct or incorrect? No, uh, it's ob an object's weight is its mass times the acceleration. What's mass? The amount of matter inside an object. Right, but mass can, there's there's more than one definition of mass. If it's something weigh, mass. Yeah, if something may, weighs one kilogram, then it has one kilogram of mass. Yeah, but that one kilogram gram is really more of a mole, isn't it? Because it's a calculated amount of mass. Oh God, you don't know the difference between mass and mole either. Fuck's sake. Mass can be a mole. Mass can be a mole. Are you there's a problem with mass. Brian, it's not here's clearly the, defined. Brian, Brian, here's the issue, right? You That's why I never use it. I use you, the word matter. You start. I use the word matter. Right. Brian, mass also Brian, stop, stop. Brian, Brian, stop. Just stop. Something Brian, will just stop. Same way as how to no, no, dude. You just need to Brian, Brian, you just need to stop. All right. You are trying. No, Greg, it, no, 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 no. It's my turn now. I listen you, to you. You Greg. are you are trying to argue physics when you have zero knowledge of physics. You don't know what you're talking about at all. You you what, don't what, know what, how what to calculate these wrong? things. Everything, literally everything you have said is wrong. Calculations are just calculations, Craig. They're just yeah. mathematics. And what if, you, if you wrong? can't provide maths to back up the things that you're saying, then you have no evidence. You need to provide... I don't need maths. No, yes, you absolutely fucking do. You, no, no, you absolutely you do. You need to... Brian, stop. You need to provide me with maths to calculate how much things should accelerate based on density and everything like that. But there is no calculations around that. You know what there fucking is calculations around? Gravity so, and the heliocentric model. Weight? And it all works. Stop being what a denialist. No, 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 weight? stop, stop. At this point, you are just engaging in more denialism. 
No, Chris. Yes, you okay. need to go and no. read a fucking physics this book. Is a you need, no, no, you need to learn some basic physics. You cannot debate this because don't you don't know the first thing act. about physics. I'm, I'm you can't sorry. debate this, Brian. You cannot debate this because yes, you I don't can. know you the can. things that we are talking yeah, about. You don't I'm know what we are... No, no, Brian. No, I'm stop. Not, shut I'm up. Shut the fuck up. I'm talking, right? Shut the fuck up, right? Yes. You cannot debate this because you do not have any knowledge upon the subjects which you are talking about. What? You can't debate what? What? What because you're dumb it? as fuck. All right, so now it's ad hom time. No, that's a fact. It's I don't, I don't understand, and there is an ad hom. That's what no, Rafa no, no, gets. No, no, it's a fact, Brian. You're dumb. You can't oh. accept the most basic of facts. You don't even know what, what? acceleration is. Fact, the acceleration okay, give me a basic is. The acceleration is changing velocity over time. You can't even accept that basic fucking fact. fact. I just I did, you fucking I didn't retard. Was, I didn't say it wasn't a change in velocity. Oh, hang on, hang on now. I didn't say, I, I didn't right? deny Another it. Another basic it, fact, you're denying that that's an acceleration. No, I'm yes. denying that that's 98 meters per second squared. Then you need to show evidence that it's not that because every experiment ever it's shows that it is, it is. including it's fucking it's kids it's doing it at school. It's your claim that things are accelerating at 9.8 meters per it's second squared. It's a known fact. Right. That's delta X. X is gravity. Prove gravity. I... Where is the hypothesis test for gravity? It's there been done one. many times. Yes, there is. Hypothesis. Cavendish uh, before, demonstrates before. that mass attracts mass. End Cavendish of story. Cavendish didn't do any experiment. Cavendish, did... Cavendish already Cav pre-assumed Cav gravity before no. it is observation. Doesn't matter. It's still demonstrated an attraction between mass. Shut up. Stop talking. No, Cavendish shut up. I'm muting you because you can't fucking shut up. Cavendish did not assume anything. Cavendish showed an attraction between mass. End of fucking story. Brian, you honestly don't have the first clue of what you're saying in the slightest. Not one thing you have said tonight has been right at all, okay? Uh, I acknowledge that I need to learn more about um, geodesic surveying and stuff. How about you have some intellectual honesty and acknowledge the fact that you need to learn the most basic shit about physics before you try and argue things like gravity and Coriolis because you haven't the first clue what you are talking about, right? Um, I'm done tonight because I need to get ready for another stream. I'm going to unmute you. You can have your final say, and you can stay for the super chats if you want. But trust me, they're all going to be saying that you're an idiot. Okay, so you you shouldn't have had harmed me. You shouldn't have gone the other road. If you don't understand, you don't understand. It's true. I I understand just fine. No, you don't. I understand you don't fine. understand a fucking thing. I you don't, you don't know what acceleration is. I'm looking have, for proof. I have demonstrated you, absolutely 100 percent tonight. You, that you don't, don't know what you are talking it, about. It's all. Delta X arguments you, are you. No, no Delta X you arguments. Everything X is backed up. Everything. X, no, X right? Everything's X backed up. No. Brian, X no, X shut No, you're wrong. Gravity. Shut up. A proof of gas pressure. Right, everything you say is wrong. I've demonstrated that gas pressure can exist next to a lower pressure. Do you want to see gas pressure next to a fucking low pressure? Because that's easy. Um... Are you ready, Brian? I'm going to show you gas pressure next to a lower gas pressure. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you I ready? I can show you Blue Hearts and Science's videos. That are has you, a are you ready? Is this without are a container? You ready? Are you ready? Yes show no? me whatever. Sure. Show me, yeah. Show right, me. so I'm, I'm about to show you, right, high pressure next to low pressure with no barrier in between them. You ready? Blown your fucking mind. That's a weather system. Yeah, within it's, it's low pressure. pressure. It, uh, it's low yeah, pressure so next to high pressure. A that's a delta X argument no, again. It's no, it's not. You have to prove where the pressure came from in the first place. No, it's not. It is. You're not no, proven not. X. You're not proven no, gas no, pressure with no, it. No, 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 Brian. There's stop move, stop moving the goalpost. No, moving the goalpost fallacy. Stop it. No, it's not. No, no, no. moving the no. moving, moving the goalpost fallacy. Moving the goalpost fallacy, stop it. The flat earth claim is that a high pressure system cannot exist next to a low pressure system. I am showing you a picture that no, that is wrong. That's not, that is, no, this is not a high, this is not gas pressure yes, next to a vacuum. I'm not equalizing into it. That's not a vacuum. That is no, uh, pressure. Hey, no, no, wait, wait, no, nobody says that space is. Wait, 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 stop. 
nobody says that gas pressure is next to a vacuum anyway. The space isn't a vacuum. It's a low pressure yeah, system. It's also a vacuum. Because I it's in a minus two in your belief. I am showing you right now low pressure You're showing me next to high pressure. Within gas pressure. Where did you get pressure from before in the first place? Brian, like Delta X. Is X there is like, stop no gas. just stop just stop. Yes or no question. Is there low pressure next to high pressure there without a barrier? Yes or no? Yeah. Right, thank yes. you. End yes. of story. Game over. Here's Done. I'm from originally, Craig. Thank you very much Where's for the, playing. Thank head. you for playing. Where's well the done. Originally? That's the problem. Gravity. That's a stupid thing. That's no there's no gravity. You have yeah, not proven is. gravity. Yeah. No. This. Gravity. What is gravity. Which gravity, Craig? There's Which only gravity? one gravity. Right. Right. Now you're going to so talk about how you don't understand the difference between Einsteinian and Newtonian, aren't you? And how they actually described exactly the same so thing. Because you can even derive Newtonian's laws, Newton's laws from Einstein's field equations. They derive exactly the same thing. This is another what fucking is stupid flat earth talking where point. Is, Einstein, is, stop talking. I'm talking. Space. I'm talking. Stop talking. Right, no. You don't get to talk over me. I mute you when you start talking over me. Right. Einstein explained it. What was ha uh, why what was happening? Newton explained what was happening. Einstein is a lot more ac You're muted, so it's just just stop talking. All right, I'll I'll, I'll meet you after I finish talking. Einstein is more accurate than Newton. That's all there is to it. Newton described what he saw and created a universal law around it. Einstein dis um, explained why that happened and then developed relativity. They actually describe exactly the same thing, um, and that's why you can derive Newton's laws from Einstein's field equations. Stop with the stupid, moronic flat earth talking points that are just retarded. Am I right. on mute? Yeah, I'm gonna read my super chats. You're welcome to hang around. Crafty Keeler for okay, two years I'm... says, have fun tonight. I hope Brian has found his brain. No, he hasn't. Brian one has no brain. Say, Craig. Craig, one thing to say about, about, the, about the gravity issue. Before you don't know you go what you're talking to... about, so there's no point. No, I do know what I'm talking right. about. Isla Moon for 99 cents. Uh, just this. gives a smiley you face. Know um, Einstein's theory of general relativity no, and no. space time is an equation. More calculations. That's yeah, all it is. It's, it's, been, just it's been experimentally Not demonstrated. Experiment. It's been experimentally experiment. demonstrated. Brian, the, no, no, you admitted to me that you've never even done any research around it, so go and do some, because I've done lots. I have. I didn't admit to you anything like that. I never uh, said that like you said that or i no, did not say that. i asked you have you ever googled you experimental said, evidence of relativity and you said no right david oliver for two pounds says have a good night Craig. oh brian brian no one wants to hear you anymore please just just stop being ignorant it's it's embarrassing for the rest of the irish it's a calculation it's a just, calculation i mean and what's you, the you do what realize that the not even other flat earthers agree with you right um experiment Sorry? it's just What's an experiment? What's a science experiment? Name out the, the parts, the constituent oh, parts of a science me. experiment. Here we go. More flirt Let's talking go. points. He doesn't even understand oh, science. Go, David Let's Oliver go. for two pounds says, have a good Let's night, Craig. Go. Then we got, oh, can you it's just be a science, a science educator here oh, on the YouTube? Shush, shush, shush. It's okay. We all know you don't understand physics and I'm reading my super chats. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cy Allen uh, is a new member. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us, Cy Allen. You can now use the amazing emojis of Nathan Thompson in jail. Uh, Paul Wade for one pound. Thank you very much. Cy Allen for two pound. Thank you. Stash for five pounds says hi fight. Love the shows. Always learn something watching. Love the JM execution. Ha <laughs> ha. Keep up the good work, man. Yeah, honestly, after how anyone can even still push Flat Earth after I murdered it the other day. I don't know. Um, Jackalope Herdmaster for five dollars says everyone please ignore Natalie. He actually craves the attention. Uh, Crafty Keeler for five euros says Brian's logic just undid decades of work to end the stereotype of Irish being idiots and a laughing stock. He needs to stop while he's behind. That comes from another Irish, by the way. Um, she's very embarrassed that she's in the same country as you. Am I on mute? Yeah. Yeah, I don't care what she thinks. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, I, I'm just letting you know the general sentiment of the Irish yeah, people. They, they, they've, they, yeah, they, they, they've like said you're not part of them. Um, I don't I, care. I got a letter directly from the, 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 the Irish PM and he was like, Brian's not one of us. Please don't associate. Uh, Vallis for $5 yeah. says, if surveyors pre-assume a globe, then all their measurements would be wrong. I know, right? It, but um, again, I need to do some studying exactly on geodesic surveying methods because I at the moment only have a cursory knowledge. 
Um, Rumpus and anyone else who it can correct me on anything I've said, please feel free to email me. I would like a conversation on that. Um, David Oliver for two pounds says, "Is the present the time horizon?" You just broke my brain. <laughs> Crafty Kida for two euros says, "Mountains say where on a Nathan Dole brain hurt you." Yeah, okay. David Oliver for £10 says, if Flat Earthers did an experiment correctly corresponding to all factual information, then they will disprove their claims. So they have to botch the results. Yeah, I know. That's happened a few times, hasn't it, really? Um, What's that? Flat, flat Earthers uh, doing experiments and then demonstrating that the Earth's a globe. If you're seeing through oh, this oh, hole, through yeah. the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard... Or at 17 feet off the water, the Earth is flat. Uh, uh, it's holding it up at 23 <laughs> feet high, and we're seeing the light. Well, that's because the Earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 15 hey, feet. That's all you got. Okay, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're going to hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his, um, There's We don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light uh, way above your head. Is this the cover of the Ocho Clinic? Oh, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, dude. Uh, Is that the cover of the Ocho claiming, Craig? That's what Jeremy was that's claiming. That's a radius first, Craig, for that. Oh, 3,950 miles, no worries. Really? Who calculated that, Craig? A bunch, of, that uh, a bunch of geodesic surveyors. No, they didn't. Oh, they did? Really? Because you don't even know what they did, and that's from your own words. Uh, I'm not saying I don't know what they did. I'm saying I need to study their methods more conclusively. But I, I can I, tell I, you from the title of the papers they published called Calculating the Radius of Earth that geodesic surveyors yeah. have calculated the radius of Earth. Really? Yeah. Where did they get the, where did they get the 3959 for the radius in the first place? Uh, they calculated it. Just go to mc2.net. No, really, uh, wait, wait, Brian. If you really, really used that Brian, Brian, incorrectly. Brian, if you really, account, Brian... If you really, that, 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 present no, day you're, back you're, you're still talking. Um, if you really would like to learn, yeah, if, if you would really like to learn, then go to mctune.net forward slash. No, I don't do nothing to learn off of him. Absolutely not, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, I mean, he's just gathered the information from surveyors. Yeah, sure he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you would like to see it, um, no, and uh, do you wait, get it wait, no, there? If you would like, uh, no, I, look, Brian, wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, no, no, I'll have to mute you if you talk, right, no, you, thank you, I'm talking right now, all right, if you have any intellectual honesty, the thing that you will do is go to the web page that I have just suggested, look at all the reports from the geodesic surveyors and read it, instead of just going, no, they didn't, have a look at mctune.net forward slash r, then come back. No. I'll debate no, you on of course it. not. You of course ready not. To go. I, of course you think not. I have you, not. You, 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 think you, I don't know you don't like looking at evidence, do you? You don't like no, looking. No, you think I don't know about geodetic surveying. I have no. been looking at the geodetic surveying for some well, time. If it's, as, if it's as good as your knowledge of uh, Coriolis and um, gravity, then I'm not worried right in the Coriolis slightest. Coriolis is very good. It's a visual effect. And you keep on trying <laughs> to come up with the argument what you won't see it. You have no but clue what Coriolis is. It is literally the law of conservation of momentum. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, oh no! Now, now you're using um, now you're using the modus fallacy. It will rotate underneath an airplane. Now you're using the modus fallacy. Yeah. So not P. It's not rotating underneath bullets. Yeah. Now Simple you're now you're using the modus fallacy because no one says that the no, Earth rotates that underneath no, things. That is correct logic. No. That is correct logic. Um, actually, all right, let me just uh, tell you what, this, what you've what done you, wrong. Do you really, do we you really want to do this? Yeah, because what, what you've basically done, Craig, is we were having a conversation, but you didn't like the way things were going. So now you're in the position of trying to keep ourselves happy and try and trigger the whole thing. What's the point of this? Um, Everything I, was going okay. My point is always to show that flat earthers don't know what they're on about. Well, you're showing that you don't know. No, no, I, I know exactly what I'm on about with Coriolis. Oh, you don't. You oh, don't do. have a clue. Right, so what you are doing is called... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let me... If you're going to use modus, then I'm going to call you up on the modus fallacy that you're doing. Because what you are doing is denying the antecedent, sometimes also called the inverse error or fallacy of the inverse, is a formal fallacy of... In... Stop talking and listen. 
is a formal fallacy of inverting the inference from the original statement. It is committed by reasoning in the form if P then Q, therefore if not P then not Q, which may also be phrased as P Q implies Q, therefore not P implies not Q. Arguments of this form are invalid. Informally, this means that arguments of this form do not give good reason to establish their conclusions, even if their premise are true. The name denying the antecedent derives from the premise not P, which denies the if clause of the conditional premise. One way to demonstrate the invalidity of this argument from which uh, from is with an example that has true premises but an obviously false conclusion. For example, if you are a ski instructor, then you have a job. If you are not a ski instructor, therefore you have no job. That argument is intentionally bad, but and I'm talking, stop talking. I'm talking right now. Uh, no, okay, I'm going to mute you while I'm still talking because I haven't finished. That argument is intentionally bad, but arguments of the same form can sometimes seem superficially convincing, as in the following example offered by Alan Turing in the article Computer Machinery and Intelligence. If each man had a definite set of rules of conduct by which he regulated his life, he would be no better than a machine. But there are no such rules, so men cannot be machines. However, men could still be machines that do not follow a definitive set of rules. Thus, this argument, as Turing intends, is invalid. It is possible an argument that denies the antecedent could be valid if the argument in, uh, incentivizes some other valid form. For example, if the claims P and Q express the same proposition, then the argument would be trivially valid as, would beg, as it would beg the question. In everyday discourse, however, such cases are rare, typically only occurring when the if-then premise is actually an if and only if claim, i.e. by a conditional equality. The following argument is not valid, but would be if the first premise was, if I can veto Congress, then I am the US President. This claim is now modus tollens and thus valid. If I am President of the United States, then I can veto Congress. I am not President, therefore I cannot veto Congress. You don't even know the first thing about modus tollens fallacies. The logic is used of the modus tollens. If okay, you, know, name you, is you know you were, you were muted tollens. for that whole time, right? I wasn't speaking that whole time. Oh, uh, I could see if you. If you're rotating underneath bullets, then no, it's no all one's saying that. To be rotating underneath all other no. objects in the sky. No, that is, be, that's uh, denying the antecedent. Oh, what's the antecedent? Right, is it rotating or not? Yes, but it's not rotating underneath bullets. Right. What is your proof of this? For this to be proof, you, to, you have to start with the Coriolis effect. How come we don't see the Coriolis effect? Then? How we come do. we don't see it? We don't. What's a hurricane? That's caused by the Coriolis. That has nothing to do with a, with a Coriolis. 15 degree not per hour drift. It yeah, absolutely it does. It has nothing. That's a weather system that yeah. has an actual spin direction. Yeah, Coriolis and, has and, uh, perceived. No, no, no. no. Coriolis. Perceived, no, stop talking. Stop talking. No. Not the same thing. You're wrong. A hurricane is formed from pressures. You just showed yeah. one a minute ago. Yeah. Pressure and, and weather. And do you know why it's caused? Not Visual effects. Do you know a why visual effect, Coriolis effect. Oh my God, he doesn't stop, does he? Reflection, not an actual spin. Two completely different things. You finished? No, I'm not. If you're going to keep on talking about Coriolis, I'm going to, I'm going to just destroy you on it. You don't I mean, know what you're you, talking about. You don't know the first thing about Coriolis. You don't know, though. You think it's got to do with the concept. You think Coriolis. That's exactly uh, what Coriolis. it is. Conservation of momentum are the same thing. They're two completely separate things. That's why they have separate names. Do you They're think, separate uh, right, Brian? Do you think that um, if we asked a physics professor, he would agree with me or you? I don't care what he says. He's wrong if he doesn't agree with me. Oh He's wrong. my fucking god! That is the most retarded thing I've ever yeah. said. What someone's education is, Craig, it's it's whether they're able to understand or not understand. Yeah, and, I, and if do you not think a physics professor would understand the Coriolis? That the conservation of momentum and the Coriolis effect are the same thing. Then he's wrong. Clear what his what his title is. He's incorrect. So that you, is know, that. you know more than all physics professors. Let me give you my 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 original example. If I'm on a roundabout with my back to the centre of the roundabout... Oh, no, and Brian, no, no, we're not going for it again. You were wrong last oh, time, right? So let's, let's simplify this now. If right. I'm on a roundabout, oh I'm turning... And Brian, I said no. Brian, I'm doing my super chats. Why, no, Why because, is what's your problem? Uh, because we, I'm doing my super chats now. You've already been wrong about the Coriolis. I've been correct. You've been wrong about the no. Coriolis. You are completely <laughs> wrong. Here, Everybody no, that knows anything about Coriolis knows you are wrong. Um, no, right. I would have known what 
No, no, no. Coriolis Literally affected. anybody that knows anything about Coriolis knows that you are wrong. Of the Coriolis effect, and there is nothing in there about the conservation of momentum. And yeah. I can show you and the you same. You just demonstrated you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. There's no, there's no references to either in, in any definitions. Brian, it is literally the conservation of momentum. 100 million percent wrong. The Coriolis effect is a visual effect that happens to the observer on the non inertial reference frame when they're observing the, uh, an object in, in the inertial reference frame appearing to deviate due to their position. That's all it is. If I'm on a roundabout with my back to the, to, the, to the center of the roundabout and it's spinning, right, and I have a ball in my hand, then my, I'm going to retain the angular momentum of that roundabout. When I throw the ball in a straight line up, up away from me, then that is going to maintain the linear momentum of me throwing it. Do I have to embarrass you live, Brian? That's that, right? But that doesn't change the visual do I, effect. Do I have to embarrass you live, Brian? Do I, do I have Craig, to? It do I have oh, hell, to do hell, this? You're wrong, Craig. By proving you're wrong. That you're, no, well, I'm really not. I mean, if you could show me one thing that says you're that you're right. Do I, do I have to embarrass you live, Brian? Do I have to? I don't care what you show. If it's not what I'm saying, it's wrong. Oh, my fucking God, that is retarded. No, that is correct. Show what you want. I want to see it. Show it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not... I'm waiting for my, I'm trying to find my page. Hold your fucking horses. Do, 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 do. Unless it's what I say, it's wrong. That is so fucking, like, it's egotistical and stupid. No, it's because I know what I'm talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. You've got yeah, no yeah. knowledge of physics in the slightest. Uh, I know what I'm talking about, Craig. I have no, to no. You, you don't know anything about physics, Brian. Like at all. I've lost my fucking. Right. Mind. Conservation of momentum. Definition of conservation. Conservation of the momentum. A principle in physics: the total linear momentum of a system of particles not acted upon by external forces is constant in magnitude and direction, irrespective of any yeah, yeah, reactions. We, of we know of what it is, Brian, and. It's, Demonstrated in the Coriolis. Right. Where, where the That's fuck is my page gone? Right. Conservation of momentum. Momentum. General law of physics, physics, according to which quality, sorry, quantity called momentum that characterizes motion never changes in an isolated, oh. uh, isolated collection of objects. That is, the total momentum of, of a system remains constant. Momentum is equal to the mass of yeah. an object multiplied just velocity, me up. and it is equivalent to the force required to bring the object to a stop in a unit length of time. For, for any array of several objects, the total momentum is the sum of the individual momenta. There is a particular, yeah, particular you just however, up what I'm saying. involving both the direction and the magnitude of motion. So the, moment, the momenta of objects going in opposite directions can cancel to yield an overall sum of zero. Nothing about the Coriolis effect. Now let's read the Coriolis effect definition. Let's see if they talk about Let's see what if they talk about right, the oh, Coriolis yeah, effect. Go, found it. Right. Effect, the illusion produced by a rotating frame of reference this type of effect is also known as a fictitious force or an inertial force. The Coriolis effect occurs when an object moving along a straight path is viewed from a non fixed frame of reference. Typically, typically this moving frame of reference is. Yeah, Brian, earth, you don't know what any of these words mean, so just stop talking now, all right, and we'll get to actual science. All right, no, stop. Right, I'm, just, I'm muting you because I'm fed up of you just reading definitions when you don't know what they mean, all right? All right, you just stop. No, just stop talking and I'll unmute you, all right? Just stop. All right, thank you. All right. Why? Because everything, you're just waffling on, you're just reading definitions and you don't know what they mean, right? So let me actually explain it to you using actual fucking science references, okay? I, 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 I right, stop, don't know what they right, mean. No, stop talking, no, no, stop, stop. Right, I'm, I'm muting you again if you're not going to let me explain to you. All right? No, you're muted right now, Brian. Nobody can hear you, not even me. Nobody. So just stop talking and I'll unmute you. Right. Tell me when I'm unmuted. Okay, you're going to stop talking or are you getting muted again, all right? Well, am I going to be allowed to speak? Uh, once I've spoken, then I'll give you a chance to speak, yeah. All right? So shut your flaps okay. and listen. The Coriolis force is literally known as the law of conservation of momentum. Like, I can bring up definitions that literally say that. 
But in this page, which is physics.usyd.edu, okay, and it's talking about what the actual conservation, uh, uh, what the Coriolis is, it talks about an important physical law is the angular momentum of an object does not change unless acted on by a torque, force times perpendicular distance. This is known as the law of conservation of angular momentum for our sliding puck. There are no torques acting on it, therefore the product is VEYR equals constant. Now, to understand what that actually means, you would have to read a bit more of the maths and do some of the maths because Coriolis is literally all about maths. But what that is saying is that Coriolis is the conservation of angular momentum. It is maintaining the inertia you have whilst going from one area to another, hence causing a drift ahead of or behind of the thing that you are rotating on. It is from the outside observer. It's not saying any of that. Uh, uh, it didn't say any of them things, Craig. Do you want to stop you're talking? Saying nope, saying okay, you're saying it. It didn't say any of them. No, no, you don't know how to be quiet. It's amazing, guys. He literally doesn't know how to have a conversation. He literally, you know, I don't know if it's because he's got like a lobotomy or, or he's sort of a childlike mind or something, but he has an inability to stop talking and listen when someone else is. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, right now, I, I can't hear him and neither can you, but his little voice thing's just going up and down as he's shouting at himself like a crazy person in the night. So... Therefore, when the radius r increases, the velocity vy, which is the second velocity vector, okay, um, must decrease. This means the puck must deflect to the right as it is left behind. It now has a smaller tangential speed than the point below it on the rotating platform. It has a smaller tangential speed because it's maintained its momentum from one point to the other, all right? For the observer in the non-inertial frame of reference, the puck must accelerate because it moves in a curved path and therefore the puck must be acted upon by some horizontal force. This force is called the Coriolis force. It is not a real force, it's only an artifact of an observation made in a non-inertial frame of reference. The relatively slow rotation of the Earth makes its effect very small in situations such as throwing stones or walking. However, many of the atmospheric and oce oceanic characteristics that we take for granted are due to the effects of the Coriolis force. And that, Brian, includes hurricanes. Now, I have educated you in what the Coriolis force is. Am I unmuted? Is. Am I you unmuted? Are you are now. Okay. Where did this come from? Who, who came up with this? Who wrote this? Um, physics. Uh, can you see at the top there? physics.usaid.edu it's literally an right. education site right an education site yeah. so they're telling everyone what what people are they're already they're telling everyone what people already pre-assume okay that is a load of pre-assumption no, that not. we're on a, a globe uh, this is basically saying you won't see any coriolis effect but it's there no, that's it's not. a load of nonsense craig no it didn't if say that the earth at all. was rotating right if p the Earth is rotating underneath bullets. No one says it's you. rotating underneath bullets. It will also be rotating underneath no, airplanes. No, you get muted when you say that because nobody is saying the Earth is rotating underneath bullets. All right? Every time you say that, you get muted because nobody is saying that. Shooting more than a... No, no, he's still going on. Stop, Brian. You're embarrassing yourself. Nobody is saying the Earth is rotating underneath bullets. No, you're, you're muted right now. No one can hear you, not even me. I'm just going to get on with Super Chats. Craig, this is ridiculous because yeah, I did be best with you, but you didn't show manners in the end. You started calling me. You started. It's you started, because you are intellectually you started dishonest. Saying, I don't understand. You don't you understand. Saying, I don't no, understand. No, no. Okay. You are intellectually dishonest. You refuse to accept known facts. You're a fucking idiot. I'm not nice to flat earthers because you're all fucking retards. Every single fucking one of you. You have the mental capacity of a two year old that has drank five gallons of lead paint no one can hear you brian you're muted all right no you still arrest him should we just let him waffle for a bit look craig i'll just go if that's what you want when you let me come back in i'll just say okay goodbye and i'll go that'll be right. the end of that you can you say what you want to the audience then if you want to stop being a um denialist then i'll let you be unmuted right but i am literally showing you and explaining to you what the coriolis force is you don't know what it is because you have no experience and studying and education in what the coriolis force is you don't have a clue right if i was to show you i don't um, know if i'm muted or unmuted no, i have no you're, idea you're, you're unmuted right right but don't talk because i'm talking right now 
right? If I was to show you this, right, the Dunning-Kruger chart, you live at the top left, right? You live at the top left because that's what they call Mount Stupid, where you have so much confidence, but you have zero actual knowledge of the thing you are talking so about. So you're Whereas, telling me I'm that talking, all the definitions talking, I read were incorrect. I'm talking, I'm talking, right? Do you want me to read yeah. more? No, I'm talking. I have more. Right, no, I'm talking. You, I'm, you're muted because I'm talking, right? I have studied physics a lot, right? Which means that I have experience. I don't know everything. I probably live in the Valley of Despair, but I actually have experience in physics. I know what I'm talking about. You don't. You live on the top left. You don't know anything because you've never actually tried to study the physics behind these things. You're muted right now, Brian, because you couldn't shut up when I was talking. Shows you you're wrong. You keep on... No, nope, no, nope. okay. Just because you can read a definition doesn't mean you understand it. Brian, nobody can hear you right now. Look me, right? I say goodbye to everybody and we call it a day. Because it's not going anywhere now. No, it, it's not because it's, you're being a denialist. Well, don't, uh, don't turn it on me. Don't you, turn it on you're me. You're being a denialist. You are trying Just to say... Unmute me. You, unmute me. You're not muted right me, now. Say you're not, you're not muted that. right now. You're trying to say you know better than okay. every physics person in the world. When well, right? it comes to that thing, they're wrong. They're wrong. Totally wrong. I'm right, they're wrong. That's oh, that. That's, no. fucking, that's arrogant. arrogant. That's arrogant. You're arrogant and ignorant. Uh, right, okay, he ran away. Good. Wow, there we go. Fucking idiots. David Oliver uh, for £10 says, if Flat Earthers did an experiment correctly corresponding uh, to all factual information, then they will disprove these claims uh, They ha so they have to botch the results. Absolutely. David Oliver for £5 says, hey Craig, show Brian the Simpsons episode of Coriolis where the toilet has a big machine making the water run down the same way it does in America. Huge arse for $5 Australian says, when a flurf says there's no evidence, they mean that there is lots of evidence, they just won't accept it because it proves them wrong. Crafty Kila for two euros says, when a flurf thinks they're smarter than Newton. I know, right? Three Ron for $2 says, a rock understanding the world better than Brian. Uh, Red Cosmos Devil for $2 says, ask him what the law of density is, lol. I didn't even want to get him started. He hasn't got a fucking clue. He's a, he's a sleeping warrior parrot. That's it. Um, Valus for $5 says, Brian's logic, then please demonstrate gradient has to be only in a container. David Oliver for £5 says, Brian, if the sun is inside the dome, then why doesn't the gas of the sun escape into Earth's sky? Lol. Crafty Kila for two euros says, here comes the dumpster fire, waits for timer. Um, I should have used the, the timer, actually. I'm sorry, I didn't. Glass Monster for two Canadians says, there is nothing denser than this flurf. Um, David Oliver for £5 says, Brian, explain why a pound of grated cheese and a pound of compacted cheese still weighs a pound. Tommy Gronfield for 50 Nokias, what's the distance between London and Liverpool? Then what's the distance between London and Paris? How was that measured with magic? Sleepy Dan for $2 says, only flat earther will say you can't use math. Luke Firewalker for five euros says, I waited five min I wanted five minute boiled egg tomorrow. Apparently I can't do it because time isn't real or can't be measured. They will boil forever. Better charge for two New Zealand dollars says, measure RPM, it has to take in time into account. Yep. Crafty Healer for five euros says, standard units are a socially accepted term. Where do the definitions dictate the term physical in measurement? They don't. Um, Cepheus for 20 euros, thank you. Math is the only 100% reliable tool, absolutely. Glass Monster for two Canadians says, Brian's logic, smarten the hell up. John Rapp for two Australians says, good day, all you super chat peoples, you will rock. Timothy Foster for five dollars says, when designing blueprints, you have to calculate measurements without a physical object in front of you. Are those not accurate? No, they're not allowed. <laughs> oh, really? I'll get to that super chat. Um, William Foley for five dollars says, I've seen tungsten bars less dense than this flurf. Adam McForge for two dollars says, I have a shot on me for dealing with this moppet. Have a shot on me for dealing with this muppet. Yeah, I've got no tequila. It's all run out. Crafty Keeler, two euros. FTFE exclaiming, for fuck's sake, was every teacher Brian had. Huge Irish for $6.66. Let's all buy Craig a drink to recover from this idiocy. Hail Sagan. Uh, John Rapp for two Australian dollars. Everyone say hi to John Rapp. Measuring is adding units. Adding is a calculation. Anamorphic Mind for $2 says, Brian's logic failed. Uh, Brian's failed logic for dumb fuck of the year 2020. Martin C for five Canadians says memories of me in high school science labs 40 years ago 
doing all these experiments prove irony is lo not lost on the universe. Stoned then and stoned now. Uh, Vallis666 uh, dollars says, huge arse, I agree, hail Sagan. Peter Birdie for £10 says, I don't know how you do this job, it's exasperating. I know, he was very frustrating. <laughs> Wolf Davis for $5 says, Brian, you need an education. FTFE should be getting paid for explaining basic physics to you. You're misunderstanding everything and should be awarded zero points. Michael Barrett for £2 says, this is why teachers leave air teaching every day. Tommy Gronville for 20 Nokia says, crumble a sheet of paper, will it fall faster? Yes. Andrew Stoll for $5 says, did this guy graduate from your country's school system? If so, how without knowing this stuff? No, he's Irish, luckily. Uh, Wolf Davis, a new member, thank you very much. Uh, John Rapp for $2 says, I'm hearing a fire alarm. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, idiot. Fucking idiot. John Watson for £2. FTFE, some people are unteachable. Mike71 for $2 says, why does your phone move orientation? Gravity. Glass Monster for 2 Canadian says, what is uh, 384,400 kilometers from Earth? Space. Edward Eric for $2 says, Brian's Logic, have you watched nothing other than flirt videos? Tommy Gronville for 20 Nokia says, why gas pressure? We have atmospheric pressure. I know they think it's the same thing. Luke Filewalker for, 20, for two euros says, most roller coasters wouldn't work without gravity. Monkey Cat Pat Pat for two dollars says, ask why a helium balloon falls in a vacuum. He wouldn't have got, got it. Uh, what grew, I always get this wrong, War Coderon, War Coderid 01 for five dollars says, FTFE, there has to be a nice brick wall you can smash your head against instead of trying to explain science to this guy. Uh, Monkey Cat Pat Pat for two dollars says, OMG, my face hurts. Yeah, my brain fucking hurts. Uh, better charge for two New Zealand says, what's the clock up to, Craig? Um, yeah, I forgot to use it, honestly. I'm sorry. John Watson for two pounds says, FTFE, Basic Science Teacher Award 2020. Monkey Cat, Pat Pat. Um, oh, fuck, I lost it. Where'd it go? For two dollars says, Brian doesn't understand, therefore it's wrong. No, Brian says that unless they agree with him, they're wrong. Monkey Cat. Um, sorry, guy who's fly for five Canadian dollars says, Brian, is air pressure higher at sea level because some air is heavier than other air or because gravity is pulling it down? Climb Everest, then come talk. Wolf Davis for two dollars says, you disapprove yourself, Brian. It's embarrassing. Crafty Keeler for two euros says, get him, Craig. Um, John Watson for five pounds says, Brian's logic equals oxymoron. Daniel DNM for 50 Nokia says, flat earth model, shouldn't all the crumbs collect in the top of a potato chip bag? FTFE finish him. Thomas B for five dollars says gas pressure is not atmospheric pressure. Explain the pressure gradient inside the snow globe. Jesus. Martin C is a new member. Thank you. And the atheist Bruni for five dollars says why can't flat earthers understand the concept of contrary forces operating against one another? Mark Sweeney for two pounds says Brian tell us where science touched you. Sean Hawkins for two dollars says Brian's logic. Do you really think atmo means air? Uh, John Watson for two pounds says FTFE. Brian's logic equals oxymoron. No, he's just a moron. Crafty Keeler says for two euros, F, I'm out, FTFE. A lot of respect for keeping calm. Wolf Davis for two dollars says, Craig, I think you just committed another JM. Uh, Edward Eric for two dollars says, Brian's logic, have you solved any problems using physics or math? No, he doesn't use math. He doesn't believe in it. John Watson for two dollars, uh, two pounds, just says lol. And then better charge for five New Zealand says, Sleeping Warrior was in the chat earlier. Summon papers are coming. Yeah, of course they fucking are. Sleeping Warrior has been telling me that I'm going to be getting sued for fucking ages now. Um, however, uh, every time that something like this is said, I am taking note. And if the papers don't turn up in the next month, then I'm going to sue um, Sleeping Warrior and FE Corps for harassing me and making me and my wife worry. Simple as that. Uh, Brian Brockor for $5 says, Ask this dude if he can change his name. I mean, seriously, at the very least spell it with a Y. And rampant for a thousand claps. Is this what years eating glue does to you? It's scary. Yeah, absolutely. fucking lootly. Brian's logic doesn't have any. Um, he's arrogant, says that unless people agree with him, then uh, they're wrong. Which is an incredible display of arrogance that I've not actually come across before. That, that blew me away. Uh, right, I need to get off, guys, because I'm supposed to be doing something with the plot hole. Thank you, everyone, for watching. The Super Chats mean the world. Thank you. I couldn't do this without your support. If you're not able to support me financially, the best thing you can do to help the channel 
is share on Facebook and Twitter and all the good stuff like that. Uh, I love every single one of you. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed another destruction of Flat Earth. Oh, it's been a, a long one. Remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the Flat Earth. Fight the Flat Fight the Flat Fight the Flat Fight the Fight the Fight the Fight the Flat